Hi, I'm Chris Haroon, and this MBA degree program is not what you think it is. It's better. This program is more than 25 years of business experience, all rolled into one easy to access online program. I've sold over 1 million courses in every single country. I worked at Goldman Sachs. I have an MBA from Columbia University, and I've worked in the venture capital, hedge fund, and consulting industries. I've also started many companies, and my courses have been featured in Forbes, Business Insider, CNN, and NBC. If you're ready to nail your next interview, get a better job, get a raise, start that business you've always dreamt of, improve the one you currently run, or better manage your personal finances, then this MBA degree program is for you. I can't begin to tell you how comprehensive this program is. It's got everything, including more than 300 hours of on-demand video. I would have to do one of those dramatic opening title crawls from a certain space movie just to show you. And check out all the amazing reviews from students who have already enrolled in this MBA degree program. Last but not least, there is a 30-day 100% money-back guarantee. And because you can access this program from any device, meaning a desktop computer or a laptop computer or a tablet or even your smartphone, it means you can comfortably fit it into your schedule. Even if you work full time, it's no problem. So if you're ready to unlock the key to your potential, then I'll see you in class. Welcome to our 260th weekly webcast. Now, if this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. If you've been with us before, welcome back. So the way this call works is this is an AMA, like you see on Reddit, ask me anything. You can ask me business questions, career questions, investing questions, any questions you want. And my humble goal is to help you take uh, your career to the next level. Uh, you might have noticed over the past five or six years, I'm watching my YouTube channel and these weekly calls that I don't have a single sponsor. Uh, and I did that on purpose because I don't wanna be biased. I want you to be the customer and only you. Now, I'm gonna go through your questions you've typed here. Please keep typing more. Uh, and as I mentioned in my weekly email, what I'm gonna to do today is take a lot of questions about the MBA degree program. So the folks of this call will be on the Gold and Platinum MBA degree program uh, that starts uh, on Monday, January 29th. And you can learn more about that by going to harunmba.com slash FAQ. Okay. All right, let me let me take your questions here, first of all. Uh, Chitan, great, great to see you. Uh, Chitan wrote, good morning, Professor. Uh, you're one of the most charismatic personalities I've met. Thank you, God, God bless you. Flattery will get you everywhere. Thank you. Um, a quick question. Is there an interest rate movement and bond yield uh, correlation? Yeah, absolutely. So the way it works is, is this. Um, as interest rates go up, bonds go down, okay? And the best way for me to explain this is to use an example. Let's say that you're investing in a certain bond, okay? It's not a government bond. And it pays you 5% yield, okay? You're making 5% on every year. And then there's a government bond that also pays 5%. And let's say the United States government raises interest rates from 5% to 10%. Well, Investors prefer to invest in higher yielding instruments. So people will sell this 5% bond and buy the 10% government bond. So the bottom line is this. As rates go up, meaning government rates, bond prices go down. And that's the inverse relationship. And another way to think about it is um, pretend you buy a stock. And the only reason you own the stock is because there's a 5% dividend yield. And all of a sudden, the company cuts the dividend yield to zero. What would happen to the stock price? It would go down. Same thing with bonds. Uh, next question is, I'm aware of rising interest rates causing banks to fail, uh, like Silicon Valley Bank, but was there also a role of QT? Yeah, so QT and QE are 
levers that the government uses to change interest rates. I'll explain this. So quantitative easing, quantitative easing basically means the government is putting more cash out there uh, in the system. And the way they do that uh, is, is this, okay? So let's say you own a bunch of government bonds. All of you do. And I'm the government. I'm the Federal Reserve. I buy this back from you, which increases the amount of cash out there. And we all know that the more cash or product is out there in the market, the more the price goes down, right? Supply and demand, right? Like for example, uh, when the PS5 came out, supply was limited. As a result, the price was high. When supply went up, of course, the price went down. It's the same thing. So that's QE, quantitative easing. Now the inverse of QE, is called QT, okay? And QT stands for quantitative tightening. And what that means is the government takes money out of the system, yeah. So the way they do that is as follows. They sell a bond to you, okay? And you give me your cash, okay? Because you're buying this bond, I'm the government. And I take that cash out of the system. So that's quantitative tightening. So with respect to Silicon Valley Bank, yeah, that's exactly what happened. So Silicon Valley Bank uh, had terrible uh, risk management. What happened was this. They invested a ton of money in government bonds, right, when rates were, were low. Okay? Then what happened was they owned these bonds and the government raised rates a lot. And, you know, there's an inverse uh, relationship. So when the government raised rates a lot, the value of the bonds they held went down. And they were too exposed to these bonds here. And that explains what happened to SVB in a nutshell. Another thing that happened to SVB, which is unfortunate and definitely is a sign of the times, is because of mobile banking, there was a run on the bank much faster than what you've seen in previous uh, recessions or previous uh, uh, bank crises. So back in 2008, when we were within 24 hours of bank machines not working, if you wanted to get your money out of the bank, you'd line up and it would take a while. In fact, quick side note here, there were some corrupt hedge funds apparently according to people familiar with the matter, that hired actors to line up at certain banks in New York City so that the media would pick up on it and those bank stocks would go down. But in the past, you had to line up at a bank in order to take your money out. But now everybody does mobile banking. And so it was shoot first, ask questions later. And so with Silicon Valley Bank, there were rumors of it going belly up, just rumors initially. And so it became self-fulfilling because everybody or a lot of people withdrew their money using mobile immediately from SVB. It became self-fulfilling. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Next up uh, question is Anta was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Yeah. And Anta is, a, I think it's a sports company. Um, and then you wrote here, um, it's going to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Why is there a need to do that? Yeah. So it's, it allows for more liquidity, right? So for a company can get more access to money. So for example, let's say I'm Apple and I only sell this product in Hong Kong, nowhere else. And I want to sell it in America. So I bring it to America and I sell it there. And therefore there's much more demand for this product so more people can buy it. That's what an ADR is. It stands for American Depository Receipt. Um, now, a lot of people overseas can't buy stocks unless it's on their own exchange. And that's one of the reasons they do it. So I'll give you an example. SAP, great German software company. It's listed on the Deutsche Börse in, in Germany. And it listed uh, in the United States as well with ticker SAP, it's an ADR, so that more investors could get access to it. Yeah. It doesn't change the company in terms of how much money they make, but it increases liquidity because more investors can invest in the company. All right. Um, uh, and the next question is, how does the Fed bring down the yield uh, when they're too high? Uh, and then you wrote, thank you so much. Lots of love from India. More love back to you and God bless you. Yeah. All right. So when yields are high, what the government does is, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, they flood the market with more money, okay, to jumpstart the economy. And you want to make sure you have enough bullets left in the chamber, so to speak, meaning interest rates should be well above zero to stimulate the economy. And that's why governments are fiscally irresponsible if they don't raise rates when times are good. So the government floods the market with, uh, with, with money 
Okay, now the way it does it is through buying or selling bonds. Okay, so if, if you're an investor, you're a bank, consumer investor, whatever, and I sell you a bond, you give me your money, that money is taken out of the system. With quantitative easing, in order to make interest rates go down, I, the government, buy this bond back from you and put money back into the system. Okay. Uh, Yolanda from Texas, you were my, my first um, <coughs> Platinum MBA program years ago. Great to see you. Great to see you. Um, you wrote, uh, what's your opinion on buy now, pay later? Yeah, BNPL. Yeah. Uh, for online purchasing. Is it an indicator of consumer sentiment, a poor job market, or just another unsecured liability? Yeah, I wouldn't read too much into it because it's a relatively new product. You know, if 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 people started using credit cards much, much more today than they did last year, then that might indicate a change in consumer sentiment. But with BNPL, it's a new secular growth market. So I wouldn't read into it too much right now. Um, and a lot of payment engines now accept that. Yeah. And it was a, a big positive catalyst for, for eBay a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Devon asked here, or actually, let me not skip a question. Yeah, Dewan uh, asked, um, as owners of a company, how does one take money out of the company and pay the least amount of tax? Yeah. So I've got an income statement right here, um, which I was uh, creating a, a, new, a, a new elective, my MBA program. I was using this. So the way it works is, is this. You want to make sure this line item is as low as possible. Okay. And the way you make this as low as possible, there's a couple of ways. You can invest a lot more in R&D. So you pay less in taxes. You can also hire more salespeople, et cetera. But the biggest thing that people look at is something called depreciation. I don't have a label for this, but pretend this orange brick here is depreciation. Okay. So if I buy a truck and it costs me a hundred grand, and if I can depreciate it over two years, then that means that I can depreciate it by 50K each year. So this depreciation brick here would be 50K, so I would pay less in taxes. That's one of the many ways uh, people do it. But very sophisticated companies and investors, what they do is they spend a fortune on tax lawyers. They pay close to $1,000 per hour. It's crazy, but it's worth it because these tax lawyers will move money around to make sure they pay as little tax as possible. Quick side note, the 400 wealthiest families in the United States only pay about 22% tax. And one of the reasons is because they all have tax lawyers. Now, very wealthy people get even more wealthy by paying less in tax. It's unfortunate. And even Warren Buffett has publicly disclosed that he thinks the tax system is, is not working as it should because his assistant pays more in taxes percent wise than he does. Yeah. And if you're a billionaire, the, the way the tax system works is you have to have a taxable event in order to pay taxes. So back in 2007, when Jeff Bezos was already a billionaire many times over, uh, what happened was not only did he not pay taxes, but he got $16,000 back uh, from the government uh, because he filed uh, 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 benefits for his four kids at four grand each. So for billionaires to pay taxes, there has to be a taxable event. He didn't sell any shares of Amazon that year, for example. And the way I think about it, and you all know I'm a capitalist for sure, but I think there should be a billionaire tax uh, if somebody's liquid net worth um, in stocks of the company they founded is well over a billion dollars. I think it should be an annual tax. Yeah, it's just not fair otherwise. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Devon wrote here, uh, hey, Chris, hey, when I finish your MBA program, will I be able to apply for a job on the basis of that certificate? And in what industry will I be able to get uh, that job? Yeah. I always say this to my students in the first class. I can take you to the water, but I can't force you to drink. And I say it with love my heart. And what I mean by that is you have to apply the concepts that I teach you. So you have to, you have to practice with other students. And the great thing about doing the gold and platinum program, which starts next Monday, it's a one-year program, is that your fellow students will, and I say this with love my heart, hold you accountable so that you practice the concepts. You have to practice, as Tony Robbins said, repetition is the mother of all skill. Now, in terms of students getting jobs, I've had students get jobs at the top companies in the world. I had one student halfway through the Platinum program a year and a half ago. Um, he actually got a job at Goldman Sachs in investment banking in New York City. 
And he was in the same start class as Harvard Business School students. Why? Because he practiced the concepts that I teach in terms of financial modeling, how to value companies, how to network on steroids, how to have the best LinkedIn profile, et cetera. Now, my MBA degree program is not accredited, never will be. And the reason is I don't want any government telling me what I can and cannot teach. Plus, I want to keep prices reasonable. And if I were to do accreditation, I would have to teach you bogus concepts that you won't use in the real world. You know, MBA programs, traditional MBA programs, they teach you stuff that was literally relevant last century. They don't teach you how to code. I do in my MBA program. They also don't teach you how to sell. I do, of course. They don't teach you how to network, how to interview, how to get customers, how to manage your own money. They teach you how to manage other people's money. And they also don't teach you how to start a business. Now, in my MBA degree program, I do teach you how to start a business. In fact, there is a venture capital boot camp that's in the third semester of the MBA degree program based on my experience working in venture capital and sitting on boards and being part of the Stanford Graduate School of Business curriculum when I helped students and mentored them in venture capital classes there. So everything I teach you is based on my real life practical experience. Uh, also, unlike other MBA programs, my MBA degree program has a 30 day, 100% money back guarantee. And I tell my students that by my silver, gold or platinum MBA program, I tell all of them, if you don't get at least a 10 X return on investment in the first 30 days, I want you to please ask for your money back. Last thing I'll say about this is that a lot of people have gotten MBAs from top 10 schools and have taken my MBA degree program from schools you know very well. And they always say in the first 30 days, humbly, in the first 30 days, they learn much more than they did in their entire MBA degree program at a fraction of the cost. And the price of my silver MBA degree program is literally the cost of one or two hours of, of an MBA from a traditional school. Okay, great. All right. Um, All right, now, and, and you've got a network, man. Like I'm, They don't teach you this in business school, and it's the most crucial skill set uh, ever. Um, so the, the harsh reality is this. For every job opening you see online, you literally have a 1 in 250 chance of getting that job. Who gets that job? It's not the person with you know the Ivy League education. It's quite often somebody that knows somebody at the company. So I teach you networking on steroids in just the first couple of classes. And if you're in the platinum program, and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching as part of it, if you're in the platinum MBA program, I will coach you and write your entire LinkedIn profile myself with you. Yeah. And I'll help you to network. Yeah. All right. Um, next up, uh, Flor hey, Florian uh, wrote, hey, Chris, uh, when is your new Python course coming? It's, it's out right now. Yeah. And it's available um, uh, for MBA students. I'll, I'll show you. Okay. So if you go to if you go to learn.haroonventures.com right here, uh, and this is my, my store on Teachable, it's it's an elective you can get which is included uh, in the MBA degree program. So I add a lot of new content to the MBA degree program every year. And for those of you that have bought my silver, gold, or platinum MBAs over the past five years or so, you can always go to the last lecture to get access to all the electives. And later this year, uh, what I'm adding is I'm adding an elective uh, on real estate. It doesn't have anything to do with technology, but I'm going to teach you real estate 101 from scratch. And that will come by this fall. Yeah. There, I set a deadline date. Now I got to make it happen. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question is from Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Uh, Tracy wrote, are there any group projects required uh, in the MBA program? No. Now, the way the MBA program works is there's 100 classes. It's every Monday and Tuesday for a year. So you graduate this December. There's 100 classes. And after each class, there's a very short quiz, which is really easy to complete. And you learn during class. It's edutaining, being educational and entertaining with awful dad humor. I'm sorry about that. But the way it works is there's 100, there's 100 quizzes. In order to pass the MBA program and get your degree, all you have to do is get over 50% on half of the quizzes. And I set it up that way because it's not fair for me to have everybody watch every lecture. Maybe you're only interested in learning finance and accounting, or maybe you're only interested in entrepreneurship, or maybe you're only interested in sales marketing communications or personal development, meaning how to accomplish much more every day. 
And so I think of myself like I'm a waiter. Okay. And this is where I proposed to my wife. She said, yes. And MBA does not stand for married, but available. That was awful, that humor. Sorry. But I'm a waiter. Okay. And when you go to a restaurant, you look at the entire menu. You don't order everything. You order, you know, a couple things that you're, that you love the most. And that's what I feel that my role is as a teacher, coach, mentor, et cetera. I want to expose you to different careers. I want to teach you using many different tools. And I want you to choose the career you're most passionate about. Yeah. That's my raison d'être. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, and then the next question is, um, where are the networking uh, programs held? Yeah. So I, I do it uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, and I'll show you a video in a little while of the previous uh, few that I've held here. Um, it's a lot of fun. And if you don't graduate, you can still attend, but it's only for gold and platinum members. Yeah. And if you can attend in person, uh, we have an online webcast version as well. I, I bring a couple of cameras hooked up to Wirecast similar to this weekly call. And I do a live webcast uh, for that event. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Andre wrote, good morning, Chris. What are your plans for your birthday? Yeah, thank you. No, so my birthday is coming up. Uh, great to see you, buddy. My birthday is coming up on February 2nd. The older I get, the better I was. So I bought myself my own Christmas present. And I'm such a nerd. And I'm going to show it to you next week. So the Christmas, or pardon me, the birthday present I bought for myself is the new Apple VR product. And I'm such a nerd that last Friday, what I did was I got up really early at 4.45 a.m. my time. So I could pre-order the Apple VR product. Yes. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll demo it to you as well uh, next week on the, on the webcast. If they ship it by February 2nd, which they said they would. Yeah. All right. I think that's February 2nd next Thursday. Maybe I'll have to do it the week after that. Yeah. But, but I'll give you a, a live demo of it as, as well. And I'm, I'm really passionate about eventually teaching my MBA degree program from, from the metaverse. And I'm always experimenting with new technologies. And the second I launched my MBA degree program years ago, I told my students that if new technologies are invented that I think can help your career, I will learn these technologies and add them to the curriculum as free electives for you. It's a one-time payment. You get free electives forever. And over the past year, I've worked day and night. I've aged a lot. I work day and night to add many AI courses as well as Excel and Python. And I'm working on tons more right now. Now, what I did a couple of years ago just to experiment, and some of you might remember this, is I did one of these webcasts from the metaverse. And so if you go to mbametaverse.com, you can see what that looks like here. Sorry, I'm using a lot of bandwidth uh, to do this call. And what, what I did, <laughs> what I did was I, I did the entire call uh, from the metaverse and people used uh, spatial.io to, to join. Uh, uh, th this call uh, is as well. So you can go to mbametaverse.com to check it out. Again, I apologize for the bandwidth uh, I'm streaming here, which is hogging up, up a lot of bandwidth. But what people did was they had their own avatars and they walked around. Now, one of the issues, this is me buying time. One of the issues uh, with, with, with using uh, uh, AR or VR goggles is that 40% of people that use it report motion sickness. And I think if any company is going to nail the motion sickness issue, it's going to be Apple. Yeah, it's not working, but you go to mbametaverse.com, you'll, you'll see it here. Okay, so Apple will, will, will nail it. In fact, what happened was, was Facebook had a $20 billion contract with the Department of Defense uh, for their Oculus product. And it was for surface warfare drills. And 80% of the people that use the Oculus product reported motion sickness. So it's, it's a big issue, um, which I think Apple is, is going to solve. Okay. And then Andre wrote, congratulations on your 260th uh, weekly webcast. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to hold a big celebration when we, when we do our thousandth one. Oh, by the way, quick side note. Um, I'm releasing uh, my next Billions vlog, uh, maybe today or tomorrow. Um, I just finished editing it. Um, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one for every single episode. There's 83 episodes I've done the first three. So check out my YouTube channel uh, and, and you'll see uh, details on that. And, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach um, based on, on, on movies and television shows that, that are about finance. And if you want to learn 
about this, you can always go to my, my YouTube channel. YouTube's having issues, I guess. You go to my, my YouTube channel and you can click this to watch uh, my, my outline of episode one where I teach you finance lessons. This is episode two. Uh, this here is Wolf of Wall Street. And this is the movie Wall Street from the 1980s. So I'm going to do all 83 billions episodes this year. I know that's a lot. It's cray cray. Yeah. But now that I said it, I got to make it happen. Yeah. And if I was a quota carrying sales rep, I promise you I get fired. But as James Cameron, the great Canadian, representative Canadian, director once said, if you set your goals so high and you fail, you fail above everyone else's expectations. And yes, I am building a thousand schools in Africa with the profits from what I do. We finished Rwanda. Next, we're doing, uh, we're doing Kenya. Um, we just uh, secured 10 acres of land, a six hour drive uh, away from the, uh, the Nairobi airport with one of my amazing students, uh, uh, Marin Koros. Yeah. And we'll start building this year. And I will build a thousand. And Mark Benioff had this great quote. He once said, and he's the founder of Salesforce.com. I met him a number of times, largest employer here in San Francisco. Uh, Mark Benioff once said, we often overestimate what we can accomplish in a year. I certainly do. But we massively underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see here. Uh, next question is from Devon, who wrote, uh, as the Federal Reserve, meaning the bank of money, the, the, the organization within the federal government that changes interest rates, uh, as the Federal Reserve, Reserve QT, okay, let me process this. As Fed, if on QT, how is it possible that S&P 500 is still moving up as only seven companies are moving up? The rest are down from the top. Is it the big banks uh, pushing them up? Yeah, I haven't looked at the breadth and depth of the S&P 500 performance uh, this year. I know the largest components are is technology. So usually when the S&P 500 goes up a lot, it's because of the largest component, which is technology, which is about 28% uh, of the market capitalization of the S&P 500. Yeah, yeah. But I think what's happening is U.S. economy is more resilient than expected. It looks like we saw growth last quarter of 3.1% year over year. A lot of people were expecting a recession last year. It didn't happen, right? So the Federal Reserve raising interest rates not only beat inflation, but it didn't hurt the economy. And that's why a lot of investors are really excited. Yeah. But I want you to think about an annual basis, right? Because there's so much irrational volatility that occurs in the markets. I want you to be a long-term investor. As Warren Buffett said, the longer the view, the wiser the intention. And if you're not sure what to buy, then what I do, and do your own research, please. What I do is I put my money, and I have for ages, into the VOO, ticker VOO, which is the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is up close to 15% every year uh, on, on average. Of course, some years are down. Some years are much higher than that. If all you did was you put your 22K or whatever it is in your retirement savings every year into the S&P 500, in 20 years, you'd have a million dollars tax-free until you take the money out. If your spouse did it, you had $2 million in, in 20 years. If you did it for your kids over 18 years uh, before they go to college and there's an educational savings account where you can put in, um, I think it's 15K per kid. If you did that every year for each kid, that's, 17, that's 700 grand in 18 years. Run the math in Excel if you want to. So, and I know it's hard to do every year. I get it. Yeah, I had to wait until my 30s to buy my first house. But hypothetically speaking, if you and your spouse put the maximum amount you could put into your 401k, it's called RSP in Canada or super annual in Australia. But if you put the maximum amount each year for in 20 years, you'd have 2 million bucks. If you did it for your kids, 700 grand times three, that's you'd have over 4 million bucks. Yeah, tax-free. And you pay taxes later when you take the money out. And it's really important to save for your kids as well because your kids can take that money out tax-free You know, when they go to, to school if they want to at 18 or 19 years old. And they can also use that money, pay tax on it, and then buy a house as well. A house. That's how we say it in Canada. And again, my real estate course is coming out later this year. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, GR Goldman. Hey, uh, wrote, um, uh, howdy, Chris. Uh, and I think you're from, from New York, right? Long Island, I think. Uh, you wrote, uh, I'm a busy executive. Uh, I like the ability to log in when I want to on the Silver MBA. 
uh, please cover the time comments. I don't think I have time uh, for for plats uh, or gold. Yeah. So in terms of of the of the silver program, I'll, I'll show you here. And prices are going. It's not a sales thing. I have to disclose this, but prices are going up materially on all of my courses, programs, etc. In, in February. But if you go to my website here, harunmba.com slash FAQ, you can see the difference between the MBA degree programs. Okay. Now, silver, you can start right now. It's like Netflix, but you don't get access to me. I mean, there is a, a, a weekly short Zoom call we do. Um, gold and platinum, you get access to everything that's in silver. Plus, you get several hundred hours per year, that's right, of group coaching from me over Zoom. And if you're in platinum, in addition to what you get in gold, you also get nine one-on-one -on -one meetings with you where I provide confidential coaching. So think of these two programs as coaching plus an MBA. Yeah. All right, let me get some coffee. I use a straw so my, my teeth don't get brown. And I've started using this uh, over the past week as well. These Crest whitening strips uh, is, is, is well. Hopefully it makes my teeth a little bit, little bit whiter. It happens when you get older. Teeth aren't as white. Yeah. But in a couple of weeks, I'm going to smile and you'll see. Ding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Caroline uh, uh, from uh, New Brunswick, uh, Canada, wrote, Good morning, Chris. Nice to see you as usual. Great to see you. I'm looking forward to our Zoom today at 10. Uh, and then Manas from, from India, who has a great book called Bonds Before Business. Great book. I bought it. He's also um, one of the highest rated instructors uh, on Udemy uh, when it comes to his AI courses. Yeah. So Manas wrote, good morning, my, my dear mentor, Chris, please. Hope all is super, super fun and well. What a wonderful week again and a wonder, and wonderful uh, to meet the HEV Haroon Education Ventures family here. Yeah, great, great to see you. Welcome to the house of Haroon Habibi. Okay, uh, Uzair, how are you? Uh, first time I've, I've seen you ask questions here. I, welcome, I hope you join us again. Uh, you wrote here, I bought the Platinum a few days ago. Excellent, I'm humbly looking forward to working with you. Um, and then you wrote, I had a few questions. What is a company's valuation? What is the difference between funding and investing? And how does valuation affect funding uh, and investing? Yeah, so the way to set a company's valuation, there's a number of ways. I teach this in the MBA degree program in a lot of detail. So a company is worth what its net income is in the long run. And so what people do is they value companies based on price earnings, meaning a multiple of earnings. And the way that PE works, which is my favorite way to value companies, and I'll discuss two others in a second. The way that PE works is think of the denominator for the rest of your life as being the number one, okay? for all fractions. So P over E. Price to earnings means for every $1 in earnings, how many times that $1 are investors willing to pay? So if net earnings are growing a lot and net earnings and profit, same thing. But if net earnings or profit is growing a lot, that investor is going to pay more for that $1 in earnings. And the way you calculate that is you use a peg ratio, which I discussed in a lot of detail in the MBA degree program. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking, well, Chris, I don't get it. How do you value companies that aren't profitable? A couple of ways. Number one, you can forecast what earnings will be in the future and value the company based on your earnings estimate in the future, which I teach you in the MBA program through financial modeling. Or what you can do is this. If a company is not profitable right now, let's say that it, it just went public. Most tech companies go public aren't profitable. But if a company is not profitable, you can value the company based on price to revenue. Okay, so it's it's the same thing, but instead of taking uh, uh, earnings, you take price divided by revenue, which means this. For every $1 in revenue, how many times that $1 are investors willing to pay? And the way it works is it's all relative to the sector and all relative to the markets in general. So I'll give you an example. Back in the summer of 2012, I invested uh, in three IPOs. I met the management team of all three of these companies. One was Workday. I met with uh, Anil Boussri. Uh, the other one was Splunk. Uh, I met with Godfrey Sullivan. And the other one was ServiceNow. I met with uh, Fred Luddy, who, who's the founder. And when I met with these companies, I was doing due diligence on them. They were cloud computing companies. And at that point in time, the going price to revenue multiple of similar cloud computing companies was between 15 and 20 times revenue, meaning companies that 
didn't have profits that were growing quickly in the cloud sector. And so that's how we value those three companies, Splunk, uh, ServiceNow, and Workday. And Splunk got acquired uh, late last year uh, by, by Cisco. Yeah, so it's all relative. The third way, or threeth, as my son Andrew used to say, the third way to value companies is you can use what's called discounted cash flow, or DCF. I'm not a fan of it, but I teach it. I'm not a fan of it because there's a lot of unknown variables uh, in the equation that calculate DCF. If I told you, you know, X plus one uh, equals Lego, well, if, if, if I told you uh, Lego plus one equals three, Lego is two. If I told you Lego, Lego snake, and these are props in the Python course. If I told you snake plus polars plus pandas, these are all Python things, equals one. What is snake? We don't know. Ridiculous example, but that basically is what DCF is in a nutshell. There's a lot of unknown variables. And discounted cash flow, what it does basically is it looks at net profit you're going to make every single year into the future on a cash basis. Okay, and I explain this in the MBA program in a lot of detail. And discounts it back into today's terms. The problem with discounted cash flow, though, is that 90% of the value of the company is based on what's called the terminal value. So if we calculate net income for a company for the next 10 years and assume net income and cash flow is the same thing because it is, it converges over time. If we calculate that net income, meaning free cash flow for a company over the next 10 years, and we discount that back into today's terms, we can find the value for those 10 years. However, with discounted cash flow, what about years 11 to infinity? Well, that's the terminal value. And when you discount that amount using discounted cash flow, quite often that's more than 90% of the value of, of the company. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and I think you had a couple other questions embedded in there. What is the difference between funding and investing? And how does valuation affect uh, funding uh, and, and investing? Yeah. Yeah. So very sophisticated investors will always invest, prefer to invest in an A management team with a B business model rather than a B management team with an A business model. So in the private markets, and I teach you how to raise capital in my MBA degree program as, as well. I've raised and managed over a billion dollars in my career. So in, in the private markets, it's all about the entrepreneur. And I have one student uh, who was in my platinum program a couple of years ago. He raised $11.5 million from the same venture capitalists that backed uh, Baidu and, and Twitter and, and Tesla. Yeah, Draper and others, yeah. Okay, and if you have additional questions based on that response, please let me know and thank you as always. Okay. Okay. Uh, Manas wrote, the U.S. economy grew by more than 3% this, uh, in, in the last quarter of 2023, Q4, yeah? Um, last one, and then you wrote, is Bidenomics working or why is the U.S. economy and consumer uh, so cool and resilient? Yeah. I think, I don't want to comment on politics, but during the COVID pandemic, um, there was a, a new phenomenon called YOLO. And YOLO stands for you only live once. And a lot of people were like, you know what? I want to live for today. I want to be happy today. I'm going to renovate my house. I'm going to buy a new computer. I'm going to spend money on a new car. And that kind of spilled out to a couple of years after the pandemic uh, as well. Yeah. So that, that's what I think is happening. Yeah. I think people are saving less but consuming more, which helps the economy. Yeah. And it's really important because a lot of people don't realize this, but two thirds of the United States economy is consumer spending, right? It's not big business. It's consumer spending. Yeah. That's why the whole world watches the U.S. consumer closely. Yeah. When the, when the U.S. consumer sneezes, the rest of the world feels it. Yeah. U.S. economy is, of course, the biggest economy in the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Eric, uh, who's in my, my gold MBA program, he's, he's from Florida. He's a brilliant inventor and a good guy. Uh, Eric wrote, after doing an executive MBA, uh, the regular MBA in your class, yours is the best by far. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, and then Lay wrote, is silver still available? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the MBA pr the platinum is almost sold out uh, for the class that starts next next Monday. We've got a couple of positions left. Uh, silver, you'll always be able to get it. But as I mentioned earlier, prices for all my stuff is going up a lot. Uh, in February. And it's not a sales thing. I have to disclose that because I don't want people to be upset. Yeah. Okay. But for people that have already bought any of my MBA programs, it's not going to impact you because you get all my lectures for free. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and if anybody is taking silver and wants to upgrade to gold, uh, you can set up a Zoom call with me if you want to. Go to harunmba.com slash FAQ. In fact, set up a Zoom call with me even if you're not a silver student. Yeah, and you're interested in my MBA program if you want. Yeah, if there's slots available in my calendar this week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, Manas wrote, um, let's see here. Hold on a second here. Thank you for that comment. Okay. Bosco Triple B from Hong Kong, who graduated from my Platinum program a couple of years ago. Great to see you, man. Great to see you. Um, you wrote here, uh, for those who are uh, interested in the MBA program, but may have hesitation in mind, uh, I was in the same position as you before. Uh, I can say from my heart, it's a wonderful MBA. God bless you. Thank you. And then you also wrote here, and you get everything practical in the real world. More importantly, Professor Chris is passionate about teaching and enthusiastic and adding many practical and most up-to-date knowledge to the curriculum. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless you. And as I think about my, my kids, you know, they're older now, but the, the technologies that they're going to use in business to help take their career to the next level has not been invented yet. In fact, their jobs have not been invented yet. And so as new technologies are released, I'll add them to the MBA degree program if I think they can enhance your career, which is what I've certainly done uh, over the past year with the mini AI courses. And there's a lot more coming. Yeah. And of course, I partner with uh, Luca Ennison, who Google developers call one of the top machine learning AI experts in, in the world. And he's also my, my brother from another mother. He's a good guy. He stayed with me for a couple months last year recording courses. Good guy. Okay. Thank you for that. You wrote, uh, it's an awesome investment in yourself. The only regret perhaps would not be it, uh, that you didn't enroll earlier. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Um, okay. Bosco wants me to play a certain video. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, you put the drums there. Right? It's an inside joke from the platinum students, but it's, it's making me smile. Yeah. Okay. And I bought the most useless thing over the past week. So when I go to the gym and I've got an elliptical trainer and stuff in my house, I love to watch TikTok. I love to watch it as I exercise, but I hate to actually have to scroll. It interrupts my routine. And this is the most nerdy thing ever. I bought a TikTok scroller. It's a Bluetooth device. It's like a ring. Uh, and I'll show it to you as, as, as well. This is so stupid, but I wear my heart in my sleeve. Um, it's a TikTok scroller. And I am officially the biggest nerd uh, in, in the world. And I'm going to show it to you. Okay, so let's go here to, let me scroll down and see if I can find it. My wife orders tons of boots and shoes and stuff and then returns the ones that don't fit. All right, let me show you here. Too much information, Chris. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is uh, every week when I make my I juice, I order a bunch of stuff from Whole Paycheck, I mean Whole Foods. Uh, and all these antioxidants are in here. That's what I consume every week, if, if you're curious. Yeah. It's in here somewhere. Oh, goodness, Christine bought a lot of boots as she's returning. Yeah. Here it is here. Okay. So this here is the TikTok scroller that, that I bought. And I got it on sale, actually. Cheaper than that. And what you do is it's a ring. And I'm the biggest nerd in history. And you click to go to the next video uh, using this. So when you're on the elliptical trainer, you can use it. Also comes in lavender. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, here's, oh, good. Dude, uh, Ted, I haven't seen you in a while, man. Uh, you're great with jokes. You're, buenos dias, Chris. Great to see you. What did, what did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Where's popcorn? I like that. That is, that is wonderful dad humor. Thank you. Very cool. And if you guys meet me at the graduation event, Platinum and Gold students, just know I'm a very tiny man. Okay, it's 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 hard to see me. Yeah. My son Dylan has grown this much in the past two months. It's unbelievable, man. Yeah. Uh, and then ne next up, Jose uh, wrote here. Uh, Good morning. I'm learning plenty of information in Udemy with options trading. I love your teaching style. Thank you. Thank you for taking that course. Appreciate it. And remember, when you're doing options, 
Just think of them as insurance product and never underwrite or sell options because you can lose way, way more than what you invested if you're going to transact just by puts or calls and practice for at least six months first. Yeah. All right. Uh, Owez, how are you? Uh, gr great to see you. Uh, welcome to the house of Habibi. Uh, next up, we got Hassan. Uh, and I'm supposed to be talking about the, the MBA degree program today. My, my marketing, um, my CMO is going to kill me. Um, I'll get to the MBA later. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, Hassan, I'm just having too much fun. Hassan wrote, uh, I love your teaching style, but for me, committing time to a long-term degree required a serious dedication, especially for a person who's doing a job. Yeah. The great thing about my programs is it's your MBA in your own terms. You know, you, you can take the whole program on a tablet, desktop, laptop, phone, watch it from the gym if you want to whistle while you work and you have access forever. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Devon wrote, uh, Chris, I'm so lucky that I have uh, such an amazing professor. Uh, thank you. I'd, I'd love to meet him or her. Uh, and then you wrote, uh, thank you so much for your time and effort. God bless you and your family. God bless you more, way, way more. And every day I get out of bed and this is my life hack that works for me, which gets me into a peak mental state. I focus on gratitude. I thank God for 10 things in this order. Andrew Matthew Dillon, Christine, my wife, my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, Jamie, my sisters, Katie and Elizabeth, and all of you, my students. I am grateful. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then Manas wrote, um, how do options change deciding price of a stock and how to read it uh, like a pro? Yeah, I talk a lot about that in the options uh, elective, but the way it works, and I teach it with a lot of, a lot of Legos as, as well, um, as well as the Python course, tons of Legos. But the way it works is there's lots of drivers. Okay, it's not just it's not just based on earnings, like buying a stock. Buying a stock is pretty simplistic. When you invest in options, you have to worry about volatility. Okay, what's called implied volatility versus historical volatility. Uh, you also have to worry about a number of different Greek variables like theta, vega, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you have to worry about time decay. You know, as you get closer to operations uh, ex expiration the price can go down materially if the underlying stock doesn't move. Yeah. And I teach you 30 or 35 different option strategies with every template you need as well uh, in that program. And that's also set up, uh, if you guys are interested in the MBA program, just go to FA44 for those you enrolled. That's finance and accounting semester four, class four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I always wrote, uh, I work 13 hours a day and six times a week uh, and completed the uh, gold MBA. You can do it as well. Go for it. It's life changing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Manas wrote, um, <clears throat> there's a lack of AI, <clears throat> pardon me. There's a lack of AI stocks in India or even globally. And there's no ETF either for an AI in the U S uh, I think there is um, uh, any AI suggestions uh, for research. Uh, what do you say? And I'm going to, I'm going to try and find one in real time for you in a second here. Now, when I used to work at big hedge funds, I remember I needed to get short access in my portfolio because I wasn't allowed to run more than 10 or 15% net long. In order to do it, what I usually, usually, what I used to do was I would short ETFs. And my boss was always upset with me, right? And my favorite go-to short uh, when the markets were volatile uh, ETF was the SMH, uh, which is a semiconductor ETF. And my boss would always say, Chris, don't short an ETF. Do the work. Look at the biggest components of that ETF and pick one or two to short. Um, so what I'm trying to get at here, the, the message is that um, if you're interested in investing in a certain theme like AI, you can always look at an ETF that has AI stocks and either buy that ETF if it's liquid enough for the low enough fee or look at the components and invest in one of those. So let's in real time here together, find ETF for AI. All right. So AI ETF. Got to be out there, man. Okay. Let's try and find one here. And I'm going to show you the components uh, as, as well. All right. All I want is the ticker. It's got to be in here. Types of AI ETFs. And if anybody knows who they are, let, let me know. And we'll look at it together. All I want is a ticker here. Give me one second. And I'm going to go through it uh, and analyze this in real time uh, with you. All right, so let me do a search maybe here on ETF.
And if somebody knows an ETF for AI, uh, let me know. And maybe Manas is right here. Oh, here we go. Okay, I found one. All right. So this here is IGPT. So let's go together to finance.yahoo.com. And I'll enter in that ticker uh, IGPT. IGPT. Here it is here. Okay, and it's made by Invesco, a company based in, in Texas. They bought Tremark in Toronto, great company. All right, so here it is here. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at before we look at the components is we're gonna look at liquidity. Okay, so we're gonna look at the volume. Average volume is not that high. Yeah. Alexa, what is 17,000 times 41? 17,000 times 41 is 697,000. 600, it only trades 600,000 per day. So if you're gonna invest, I always say this, never invest more than 10% of the daily average volume. So that's 60K, which is a lot of money. Yeah, but you wanna make sure that stocks you invest in are very liquid because illiquid stocks own you in a down market. Next up, we're gonna look at the expense ratio, which is 0.6. Um, usually I like 0.5 or lower. And what this means is this, for every $100 you invest in this ETF after you do your research, you're gonna pay 60 cents per year in fees, which is not that bad, but usually I like 0.5 or, or less. All right, now what you'd also do is you would go to Invesco's website and you'd read the investment offering memorandum uh, for this, for this, uh, this security here. If you can't get an investment offering memorandum, uh, don't invest. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to holdings here to see what components are in here. All right, so let me scroll down here. NVIDIA's gotta be a big one. Yeah, oh wow, I thought it'd be a bigger one. So these here are, are AI stocks. Now, as I look at these, uh, the closest I can find to a pure play maybe is NVIDIA. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see uh, any other pure plays, but maybe there's more positions as well uh, within here. And what you can do is go read the prospectus on Invesco's website and find out what the smaller cap ones are, uh, like Micron here, for example. And then what you can do is um, do research on those companies uh, using the templates I provide you with my MBA degree program from a qualitative, quantitative, and technical analysis perspective. That's the last thing you look at. And then you can decide whether to invest uh, or, or not. Yeah. And for those of you that, um, that buy mutual funds, I say this with love my heart, please don't. Because mutual funds usually underperform ETFs and the fees and the hidden fees can be three, four, or 5% per year. Yeah. Buy ETFs. All right. And to learn more about ETFs, you can always go to etfdb.com. That's etfdatabase.com. And you can screen ETFs by type, by jar fee, et cetera. There's an ETF for everything. Kind of like how Apple used to say, there's an app for everything. Yeah. I wonder where the killer app is going to be for the uh, the Apple VR product, though. Yeah. All right. Um, Okay, next question is, if you want to start investing, how much money uh, should you start out with? Yeah, it, anything. I mean, if you save a dollar a day for your entire life, that's millions of dollars in the long run. Do the math, you'll see. Yeah. And the best way to invest is to have money come out of your paycheck before you get the money. Out of sight is out of mind. And so um, what you do is you talk to HR in your company. If there's an HR department, you work in a big company. And then you ask them, is there a way to take money out of my paycheck every week and invest it in my retirement savings program? And quite often, very large companies will match. Sometimes it's one-to-one. -one. Sometimes it's for every dollar you put in, they'll put in 5% or five pennies. Yeah. And the, the trick is to get it to go into your retirement savings account so that you don't pay taxes if you make a lot of money until when you take the money out many years from now. It's never too early to start. Yeah. And the way I got my, my kids into investing, uh, a, a couple ways. Uh, number one, uh, I bought my son, Andrew, in 2017 for Christmas. Uh, I bought him one share of Manchester United. Um, and I actually got the, got the stock certificate, which is on his wall right now. Now, one of my kids, and this is epic parenting fail, <sighs> learned about stocks by playing GTA Five. And by the way, when GTA 6 comes out in 2025, I'm not doing this weekly webcast for like a month because I'm just gonna be geeking out playing it. I can't wait. Yeah. All right. Um, next up, uh, Devon wrote, uh, what is the best valuation? Um, and, and what I'm gonna do um, is, I'm gonna answer just a couple more quick questions here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a replay of the open house event I had for my MBA degree program. Yeah, okay. 
Otherwise, my, my, my CMO is going to be upset. Yeah. All right, give me a second here. But I'm having so much fun. All right, let me pick a couple, couple of random ones here. All right, so Devon wrote, what is the best valuation method to value a company? Uh, I'll be applying uh, in, in courses soon, sure. I'm an investor in India holding 11 companies uh, in a portfolio. All credit to your teaching. Thank you. I've invested a lot of money over the years in India. Uh, a lot of great companies there. Uh, probably one of my best ones there was Crompton and Greaves, uh, which is an engineering and services company years ago. And Mahindra and all the Tatas and Infosys, the, the tech services companies. Yeah. My favorite valuation methodology is PE. And so what I like to do is, and I teach this in the MBA degree program. Let me change camera angles to make this a bit more fun. All right. So my favorite way to invest, ignore the orange brick, is to forecast the income statement many years from now. So you start with sales, okay, revenue. Revenue and sales are the same thing. And you forecast this for many years from now, say five or 10 years. And then you make all these other expense items, the, the red bricks here, for the most part, a percent of revenue. And hopefully expenses grow slower than revenue does. And you get operating leverage just goes right to the bottom line. And once you do that, then you get net income, which is the same thing as earnings or profit, same thing. Then you get net income. And then what I like to do is I like to slap on a P multiple based on my earnings estimate in five or 10 years. That's how I value companies. That's how I've humbly done well investing in growth stocks. Because years ago, I owned Amazon and LinkedIn, ticker LNKD, before Microsoft bought it and destroyed innovation with it. Sorry. But I owned LinkedIn and, and, and Amazon. And people would say, Chris, that's a widow maker of those stocks. And I said, what do you mean? They said, well, they're both trading at over 100 times. And my answer, my answer to that was no. They're trading at three times my earnings estimates in five or 10 years. So the way to forecast a financial statements, what I teach in my MBA program, is to start with revenue. Now, if I tell you that revenue growth is going to be like this, what's the next data point going to be the year after that? Probably here. An object in motion stays in motion, right? So you forecast it for a number of years, and then these items here, for the most part, become a percent of, of revenue. So that's valuation in a nutshell. The bottom line, though, is that my favorite valuation methodology is always price to earnings based on my earnings estimates uh, many years from now. Yeah. Okay, next question is from KC who wrote, uh, hope you're well. Uh, some questions. How do you remove a white background from a, J a JPEG logo to make it a transparent background? Yeah, there's, there's many ways to do it and you already have the software for it probably. Don't buy any software. I'm going to show you exactly how. So let me go here and let's open up PowerPoint. And then what I'll also do is I'll show you really quickly how to do this in Photoshop. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab an image here of this ugly face I see right here. Okay. And that will be saved on my desktop. Let me click it here and copy it underneath my face in the corner there. All right. So we're going to go to blank presentation here and I'll show you in, in, in Photoshop how to do that as well in a second. That's how people in California pronounce Photoshop. Photoshop. Okay, so what you do is this. And what I'm gonna show you works in all major Microsoft applications, Excel, Word, um, et cetera. All right, so what you do is you go here to picture format. Now picture format only appears once you click on the image. So there it is there. Then what you can do is you can go remove background right here. And then you select areas to keep or remove. I'd like to keep my hair, okay? Um, I'd like to keep my jacket. And then you have to pretty it up a bit. I want to get rid of this line and a little bit of green here. And then keep changes. And that, that's how it works. Now, within Photoshop, what you can do is this. I'm going to start a new Photoshop document. Let me go to my desktop here to grab that image I copied right here. Okay. And it's in my clipboard. So new Photoshop document, clipboard here. Good. Paste. Then here in Photoshop, what you do is get rid of background here. Um, sorry, it's underneath my face here. Um, and then uh, you use this uh, little, um, this magic wand here. Okay. Oh, hold on a second. Let me select the layer. Good. And then use delete, 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 delete. Like that. Okay. And then once you pretty it up and you delete everything, sometimes you have to actually highlight some of the, the colors here and just cut. Then what you can do is you can export this 
Okay. You can export it as a PNG. Okay. And a PNG basically means a document format that gets rid of stuff around the outside. So here it is here. I named it some random name. And then here in PowerPoint, what you can do is you just go to insert uh, that image, or you can do it within PowerPoint if you want to from file. Okay. Go to, go to my desktop right here and insert that image right there. Yeah. That's how it's done. Okay, great. I know there's a lot more questions. Please save them for, for later. Uh, what I'm going to do now, as promised, um, is I'm going to give you guys a, a replay of the uh, open house um, from January 12th, which explains everything about the Gold and Platinum MBA that starts uh, on Monday, January 29th. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you soon. And I will answer questions over Zoom uh, after this video is done playing. Thank you. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are number one, the day you're born, and number two, the day you find out why. I'm here today and every day forever to humbly help you find your career passion. I'm always here for my students to also help you find your career purpose. And you won't find another business teacher on the planet who cares as much and works as hard as I do to ensure that my students are successful. And I want to nurture and help my students find their ambition or get their ambition back. I will walk through walls to help you take your career to the next level. And I promise you that I care just as much about your unlimited success potential as you do. I want to help you live your life on your terms. And so welcome to our eighth annual one year gold and platinum MBA degree program. Now, please stick around until the end of today's live webcast, as I have two special gifts for everybody on this call. And so today we're going to discuss the following three topics. Topic number one is I will talk about our eighth annual gold and platinum. Haroon MBA degree program that starts this January 29th. And please note that after this class that starts on January 29th, prices will be materially increasing. So this class that starts on January 29th will be the last class where prices are this low. Also, positions are limited. And you can learn more about the gold and platinum MBA program that starts on January 29th by going to this website here, day one, not one day.com. Now, the second topic that I'll discuss is I'll quickly go through frequently asked questions about the MBA program. And then the, then the last part of the agenda for today, meaning the third topic, is I will answer your questions that you type in YouTube chat. And I will also open up Zoom after the third topic in case you want to ask me questions using Zoom. And before we do the Q&A, I will tell you how to get the two free gifts today. So let's move on to topic one of three. I'll talk about our eighth annual gold and platinum Haroon MBA degree program that starts this January 29th. Now, the value you'll get from this one-year MBA degree program is unbelievable. And if you don't think that you're getting at least a 10 times return on your investment in the first 30 days, then I want you to ask for a full refund. And there's a 30-day 100% money-back guarantee. So think of this program as incredible business and investing coaching plus an MBA. And we have many students from top MBA degree programs that have taken my gold or platinum MBA program, and they say that they learned much more in just 30 days of my program than they did in their MBA program at a top 10 school where it costs 50 to 100 times more than my MBA program. Now, this MBA program is for anybody that wants to learn how to make more money or start a company 
or learn how to invest or even learn how to use every skill possible to take your career to the next level, including how to program in Python from scratch or even how to use AI to take your career quickly to the next level. This program includes everything. And please note that no prior business will year that you will get for free forever and you have a lifetime access to everything. Now, your nine to five job might give you a comfortable life, but maybe you have no plan in place to create financial freedom. In this MBA program, you will get on the right path to achieving financial freedom within six to 12 months. And my company, Haroon Education Ventures, has helped over a million people learn how to invest or start companies in order to create financial freedom so that they can leave their nine to fives or retire early. And that might sound crazy, but I'll prove to you that financial freedom is not as hard as you might think. But first of all, let's set the record straight on what financial freedom actually means. Let me ask you this. Are you prepared financially if you lose your job? Could you survive for the next year if you didn't make a single dollar all year? And when you retire, can you comfortably live for 20 years or more without generating another dime of income? If not, you're not financially free. But again, it's not that hard to get there if you just follow what I'll share with you in the MBA program. And the true definition of financial freedom is that you have enough to support yourself for the rest of your life and leave some behind for those that you love. That's true financial freedom. And that is exactly what I wanna help you with in terms of getting on the right path to financial freedom in the next tw six to 12 months. You see, after managing over a billion dollars in assets and retiring from Wall Street, I've devoted my life to teaching anyone how to become financially free. And I've taught well over 1 million people about building wealth. And I've been humbly featured in Forbes magazine, many other magazines, interviewed on television, and I've lectured at many uh, MBA schools, including Stanford, on acquiring capital, and I've sold over a million online finance and business programs. And now for the first time ever, I'm going to guarantee you this. I will give you a custom plan that, if followed, will help your journey to retire early with enough money in the bank to support you for 20 years or more. Now, obviously, you have to follow the plan, but this plan will really assist you with getting your financial freedom if you just follow it. And I don't blame you if you're skeptical about how this plan can actually help you. But let's take a look at our track record. We've helped over a million people learn how to create financial freedom in order to be on a path to leave their nine to fives early to pursue a life of freedom and financial independence. And here are just a couple of examples. One of my students raised over $11 million for his startup and others have significantly increased their net worth or successfully changed careers, gotten raises, promotions, etc. There's no gimmicks. There's no risky new business opportunities that require a ton of money to start. And there's definitely no trying to squeeze in too many hours of weekly coursework between your job and your duties at home. There's nothing to lose if you sign up because there's a 30-day 100% money back guarantee. So obviously we have no incentive to sell you on anything if we don't believe that it will 100% work for you. And by the end of this MBA degree program that starts on January 29th and ends in December of this year, you will have learned the following. Number one, you will learn how to materially increase your net worth in the long run by saving, making, and protecting your capital, and by understanding professional portfolio management methodologies from scratch. And this is really important because we need to think like professional money managers do when building our net worth, given the time value of money. So how will we learn this together? Well, you're provided with many templates to help you manage your personal portfolios with stocks, options, and much more. And I provide you with countless easy-to-use templates in this comprehensive MBA program, including a 100-step investment framework template to analyze any company from scratch, 
including all qualitative, quantitative, and financial topics to help you materially increase the chances of making money in the long run. I also just added a comprehensive elective course on how to use AI products to do thorough investment research. This is the most up-to-date MBA program on the market. And I'm bringing my finance experience to you from my work experience at Goldman Sachs, as well as my work experience at the top hedge funds in the world, including Citadel, and in the venture capital sector where I had a pre-IPO investment in Facebook in my company. And I'm doing all this to help you invest like professional investors do. Now, the second thing that you will learn in this MBA program is you will enjoy and understand finance and accounting and learn to read financial statements like a good book. You'll also learn how to create and forecast financial statements from scratch. And no prior accounting or finance experience is required. Why is this important to learn? Because finance and accounting is the language of business, and we need to thoroughly understand how it all works in order to raise money for our business and grow our companies or careers. In the MBA program, you will receive many accounting and financial templates, and you'll learn how to enjoy the process as I teach accounting and finance in a new and different and edutaining way using many props. I have so many props here. Let, let me show you one I just put together here. So when I teach you, for example, about the balance sheet, this here, that's James Bond, that's Bond's car. And I teach you about liabilities, equity, and assets. I use tons of props. It's, it's a lot of fun this way. Okay. And I promised my son, Dylan, he gets these Lego toys after I'm done with this. Also in the MBA program, there's no theory as we do case studies on real life situations, including Disney's acquisition of Marvel, Microsoft's M&A strategy, and the Facebook IPO, and much, much more. There is no theory ever. You will also learn how global economics works, all taught in an innovative way with real case studies and exactly how monetary and fiscal policy works from scratch. Basically how the world works from a business and finance perspective. And this is all taught based on my extensive experience in finance and accounting, as I have an MBA in finance from Columbia University. I also won Finance Professor of the Year Award from the Halt International School of Business, where I taught during the evenings when I worked in the venture capital industry during the days. And the curriculum contents are also based on my extensive experience at Goldman Sachs and at the top hedge funds in the world. Now, the third thing you will learn is how to get more interviews, business partners, or mentors by learning how to network on steroids because your network is your net worth. In terms of why, why learn about networking? So you can sell more, change careers, get a new job, find more business partners, or meet with mentors in order to jumpstart your career or business. And you know that every time you see a job opening online, you literally have a one in 250 chance of getting that job. So who gets that job then? Well, it's usually, <clears throat> pardon me, the person who knows people in a company. And I'll teach you how to, to network on steroids so you can get the job or customers of your dreams. In fact, if you're in the Platinum MBA program, I will personally help you write your LinkedIn profile. And I'll teach you how to sell. I'll teach you what to say in meetings and be thought of as a thought leader so you can build the brand of you. And I have my own column in Forbes magazine, and McGraw-Hill is publishing my book this April called Financial Essentials for Managers. So what I'll do is I'll also teach you how to take your writing and communication skills to the next level. You'll also learn how to use social media to create articles, books, videos, video editing, and much, much more. And I've given a TEDx talk and keynotes all over the world. And I'll teach you how to present with passion right from the heart and how to enjoy the process as well through your epic delivery. And as Maya Angelou once said, people might not remember what you said, but they'll never forget the way you made them feel. Now, the fourth thing you will learn is how to build or scale your business. And in the third of four semesters, we have a venture capital boot camp. 
And what I do in the Venture Capital Bootcamp is I teach you how to write a rock solid business plan because failing to plan is planning to fail. Now, we need to thoroughly prepare and anticipate roadblocks or issues in our current or new business before they occur, which will ultimately help us to make more and save more. And Sun Tzu had this great quote. He said that every battle is won before it's been fought, so I'll make sure you're ready. You'll also learn how to create a pitch deck to raise money, and you'll learn how to use consulting frameworks that top consulting firms like McKinsey, Bain, and the Boston Consulting Group use when analyzing companies. And you'll learn how to manage people and how to delegate using templates provided in the curriculum. And this is all based on my humble experience as I've started many companies and raised and managed over a billion dollars in my career. And you'll be part of a global network of like-minded students from all over the world who are eager to help each other reach their full potential. And we even have in-person graduation and networking events for gold and platinum students and alumni. Now, the fifth thing you will learn in this MBA program is technology skills, including Python, Excel, and artificial intelligence. You'll learn how to program from scratch using Python and how to use every, yes, every feature of Microsoft Excel, including how to program in Excel. And we added a lot of brand new AI training as well in the electives that I continue to make for my MBA students. And when I teach you how to program, I use a lot of props and I make it easy and fun to use as well. We, we have a lot of fun doing this together. And by visualizing and understanding the learning process, we can retain and understand so much more. And this is part of the programming methodology where I teach you about object-oriented programming. Quick side note, when you meet me at our networking and graduation events, you'll see that I'm a very, very small man. Yeah, sorry, my humor is awful. Now, years ago, on day one, when I launched this MBA program, I promised my students that if new technologies are created, that I really think can help your career, that I'll work very hard to teach these new technologies to you. And so in just the past year, I've added many technology and AI electives to the curriculum, and I will continue to do so at no additional cost as you have lifetime access to the MBA and the electives. Now, when I, when I think about my kids, I've, I've got three boys. They're older now, three teenage boys. It's crazy, but fun. But when I think about my kids, you know, their jobs have not been invented yet. And the technology that they use to communicate with each other in the workforce has also not been invented yet. So I'll make sure to add all new technologies to the curriculum so that you're ready to take your career to the next level. Now, even if you don't want to be a full-time developer, you need to understand AI and technology from scratch, which you will learn in the many electives uh, in this program. And I'll teach you how to use AI so we can work smarter and not harder and accomplish so much more without the need for hiring employees. And this is crucial as technology, as AI is quickly disrupting the way business is conducted, and we need to embrace this quickly in order to remain competitive. Yes, you will learn how to program and use AI from scratch, even if you have no tech experience. And before I went to business school, I spent four years as a developer when I worked at Accenture. And please note, that the technology courses are all electives, meaning they're optional to take as part of this comprehensive MBA program. Now, the sixth thing that you will learn is how to materially increase your daily productivity so you can accomplish much more, as well as you will learn how to ignore distractions and get on a clear path to achieving your goals. And we do this with life-changing with life-changing goal-setting workshops together so you can get on the path to achieving your goals. And we'll also push the goalpost out. That's, I'm Canadian, that's what we say in Canada. It's not out, it's out. We will push the goalpost out so we can work on achieving much more than our initial goals. All right, fun. We'll also uh, document all the goals uh, on this template that I provide you with. And so one of the many templates I give you with the MBA program is the daily scheduling system 
that works and help you accomplish so much more every single day. This works. And you might be frustrated about being stuck in a job that doesn't fully utilize your potential, making you feel undervalued and stagnant. Now, my MBA program directly addresses this by offering a holistic approach to education from a business, finance, entrepreneurship, and personal development perspective. And it provides a very well-rounded skill set necessary for climbing the corporate ladder or career ladder and achieving your business aspirations. And without these comprehensive skills, there's a risk of remaining in the same unsatisfying career loop, potentially hindering your professional and personal growth. And the MBA program is designed to break this cycle, equipping, equipping you with the tools to succeed and thrive. Does this approach align with what you're looking for? Now, as I will explain later, the Gold and Platinum MBA is the same class, but Platinum students get one-on-one -on -one meetings with me. And I promise you, and I guarantee you, that I'll help you live your life on your own terms in the MBA program or your money back. And I'm so convinced that you will get at least a 10x return on your investment in my MBA program that I have a 30-day 100% money back guarantee. And I don't think any other MBA program in the world has this. And my students inspire me so much. And there's nothing, nothing we can't accomplish together. Now, students in my MBA program have achieved the following career milestones. One of my students that started in my MBA program in the Platinum MBA program, halfway through the program, he got a job offer at Goldman Sachs in New York City, working in investment banking, making $175,000 just base seller, doesn't include bonus. And he's in the exact same post MBA start class with Harvard Business School graduates. Another student of mine raised $11.5 million for his startup from the same venture capitalist that invested in Tesla, SpaceX, Baidu, Twitter, or X as it's called now. Other students of mine in my MBA program have gotten jobs at Apple, McKinsey, uh, the Boston Consulting Group, uh, the private equity sector, the venture capital sector, and on and on and on. And I'll tell you soon how you can get on Zoom, I kind of rent. I'll tell you soon how to get on Zoom to ask questions. And you can also ask questions over YouTube chat, and I'm going to answer all of them. All right. And it gives me such pleasure to humbly help my students. And I hope you really enjoyed today's live webcast. Now, this is your MBA on your terms, as the program is very flexible. And all of the students, many students from all over the world that have taken my MBA degree program have one thing in common. We're all here to help each other reach our full potential. We're all in this together. And our network of students is incredible and your network is your net worth. And the great thing about the one year gold and platinum MBA program is that our students really help each other and they help each other to remain accountable so we can all put what we have learned into practice quickly. And I say this with love in my heart and I tell my students this every year. I can take you to the water, but I can't force you to drink. And so you really have to practice the concepts I'm going to be teaching you in this comprehensive MBA degree program. Now, our global family of incredible students are from many countries. And I'm humbled, humbled to say that in all my courses, I now have well over 1 million students and my courses have generated well over $10 million in revenue. My methodology works. More importantly though, the six main pillars of the program, through the six main pillars of the program, I'm humbled to say, what I will teach you is based on stuff that works. And it's based on my real life practical experience and not based on theory. And it works and it has, it'll continue to help you reach your full potential. And I'll continue to reinvest to ensure that your MBA program is always up to date with fresh new content. And I've invested well over a million dollars so far in creating this MBA degree program for you. Now, in addition to the five pillars of content already in the MBA program, I added a sixth pillar over the past year, which is technology, and specifically how to program from scratch. And I'm constantly adding new and lots of brand new content that you'll always get for free if you sign up. 
and whatever new technologies are or will be created. I'll continue to add new content to the MBA program so that you're not just one step, but one giant leap ahead of your competition. And I'll talk about all six pillars of the MBA in more detail soon. And if you want, you can check out check it out at this website you see on the screen there, day one, not one day.com. Now, traditional MBA schools are too expensive and they're inflexible, meaning you have to physically be there in class, and they're certainly outdated. And they literally teach you stuff that was relevant last century. And they have not kept up to date with technology and social media trends. With my MBA degree program, it's affordable as it only costs the same as a few hours of, of the cost of getting an MBA from a traditional old school MBA program. Plus there's no risk as there's a 30 day 100% money back guarantee. And my 30 day 100% money back guarantee lasts for 30 days after we start the program. And the program starts January 29th. So what this means is this. If you purchase today or any time before January 29th, then the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee lasts through March 1st of 2024. And I encourage you to Google me or go to LinkedIn and find any students that are graduates of my MBA degree program and talk to them. Also, my program is flexible because you can access it anytime from anywhere forever. You can watch lectures live with me where I stop after each topic to take endless questions. Or what you can do is you can watch the recorded lessons and recorded Q&A sessions online anytime and on any device forever. And if you sign up for the gold uh, or platinum MBA program that starts on January 29th, you're allowed to join any future gold program of mine for free forever. Also, my program, my MBA program, is always up to date as you receive many hours of new classes every year for free. And the MBA program is a one-time payment at checkout. You can also make three or six monthly payments. And if you go to the website you see here, then for a limited time, you can get 20% off while positions are available. And this, again, is the last time I will, I will charge low prices as prices are going to increase materially after this January 29th class starts. And so I pride myself on teaching real practical concepts based on my experience and based on the many meetings I've had with billionaires and top CEOs and entrepreneurs, which is where I got the 101 crucial lessons uh, in my book that I published. And so I published this book while I worked in the venture capital industry. And I'm very humbled to say that Forbes magazine called this book one of six books that all entrepreneurs need to read right now, along with books by Peter Thiel, Simon Sinek, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, The Lean Startup, and The Billionaire Effect. And Business Insider called my book the book of the year in 2016. And so I teach based on my work experience and not everybody knows me on this call. So I thought what I would do is very quickly talk about my bio and why I teach. So I'm from Canada originally, but I now live in the San Francisco Bay Area with my wife, Christine, and my three sons. They're all teenagers now. They're older now, but my eldest son, Andrew, is at Berkeley uh, University. In terms of my experience, I have 30 years, I'm getting old, man. I have 30 years of experience in business. And I graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce degree from McGill University. Then I worked for four years uh, as a programmer at consulting firm Accenture. Then I got my MBA in finance from Columbia University. And when I graduated from Columbia, what, what, when I talked to my buddies that went to Columbia and Harvard Business School, uh, they were all frustrated, myself included. We were all frustrated because... We all didn't learn the most important business concepts in business school, which is why I created this MBA degree program. Now, traditional MBA degree programs do not teach you how to present. They also don't teach you how to get customers. They don't teach you how to network and they don't teach you how to interview or how to manage your own money. They teach you how to manage other people's money. And this is embarrassing, but this was apparent for me 
to me uh, when I wanted to buy my first apartment in New York City in 2002. I called my buddies that graduated from Columbia and Harvard Business School, and I asked, hey, how does a mortgage work? And they all said, I don't know. They didn't teach us that in MBA school. They also don't teach you how to start a company. Ask anyone that has an MBA, so do you now know how to start a company? They don't. MBA schools teach theoretical concepts that were relevant last century, and they teach bogus theoretical concepts like supply and demand curves, which nobody really uses in the real world, unless you're an economist. Now, unlike traditional MBA schools, my MBA program covers all of these concepts and much more, and it's always up to date. Now, after I graduated from Columbia, I worked at Goldman Sachs in New York City. Then I worked at Citadel and some of the other top hedge funds in the world. And Citadel hired me and moved my family to the San Francisco Bay Area, where I invested in technology stocks. I then started my own hedge fund and a venture capital firm where I had pre-IPO investments in my fund in Facebook and eventually in other companies like Palantir. But something was missing because when I had my annual reviews at all the companies that I worked for when I worked for other people, it was a really uncomfortable moment for my bosses. They'd always start my annual performance review meeting with something like this. Uh, Chris, you're exceeding expectations. You're a top performer, humbly. Uh, you're a great teammate and fun to work with. But can you spend a little bit less time mentoring people in other departments of the firm? And I got awards for this, for this too, um, uh, for, for, for mentoring uh, uh, people in, in companies I've worked at. I got awards for this. But my answer to them was always respectfully no, because you can't expect your dreams to come true without first helping other people's come true. And it always gives me a lot of satisfaction helping people with their careers. It's why I do what I do. Now, in hindsight, I love venture capital as I got to sit on many boards and I started many companies and humbly did well. But I found that my true passion is teaching. Teaching and helping my students take their careers to the next level. So I taught at a bunch of Bay Area MBA schools and won an award for finance professor of the world from one university. And I want to help you find your passion too. And so during the weekends, what I used to do is I would volunteer with charities in East Palo Alto. Um, uh, and East Palo Alto is in the San Francisco Bay Area here. And in East Palo Alto, only 40% of people have high school degrees. And so many of these poor students have deadbeat fathers. And I mentored them. And I love doing it. And the, the genesis of, of what I do the genesis of the idea for this gold and platinum MBA degree came from the, my charitable teachings uh, in East Palo Alto. And so I created a one-day course back in 2016 for them called An Entire MBA in One Day. Then I threw up a camera at home as I wanted to record it and help other people all over the world. And I called the eight-hour online course An Entire MBA in One Course. And I'm humbled to say that the course alone has sold over 500,000 copies. I even taught the course in Rwanda last summer at the school that we built with one of my Platinum MBA students using the profits from my courses. And the school is done in Rwanda and has solar on the roof and high-speed internet. And I'm really excited to say that per this image here, we just secured 10 acres of land in Kenya about six hours away from Nairobi, and we're starting to build our second school with another platinum student of mine named Marin Koros. And the school is going to be named in honor of her mother, and it'll be called the Lea Koros Memorial School for Girls. And your tuition helps to build these schools. And my goal is to build 1,000 schools in Africa using the proceeds from my MBA degree program. And I never did any of this for the money. And I tell my students that if you chase money, you lose your money and your dreams. But if you chase your dreams and you don't give a darn what other people think of you, then something wonderful happens. Your dreams come true and the money follows accidentally. It always does. Now, you can't reinvent yourself or make a dent in the universe unless you follow your heart 
and chase your passion. And all the best entrepreneurs never chase money. They chase their dreams. And I want to I want to humbly help you realize your dreams. As again, I can't expect to realize my dreams unless I first help my students' dreams become a reality. And so my passion is helping you. And my passion is also building schools with my profits all over the world. And so here's a here's a picture of a platinum MBA graduate named Vital and I during our first trip to Rwanda to build our school. And my MBA program is not only based on my work experience on Wall Street working at Goldman Sachs, it's also based on my work experience in the venture capital sector here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And it's not just U.S. focused. It's global in nature, as I've worked all over the world as well. You know, I worked in it and invested in companies in India, Brazil, North America, of course, all over Europe, the Middle East, China, South Korea, Japan, and many other countries. And so our next gold and platinum one-year MBA degree program starts on Monday, January 29th. And classes are going to be every Monday and Tuesday from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. Pacific time. And we start on January 29th. That's a Monday. And the last class is in December of this year, 2024. And classes are three hours long, again, every Monday and Tuesday from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. Pacific time. Plus, we have live Q&A after all topics during all classes. So each Monday and Tuesday, we cover three topics. And after all three topics, I stop and take questions over YouTube live chat or Zoom. And you don't have to watch all the classes live. You can watch the replays of them or just watch an attending class if you want and choose what you want to watch. Okay, only watch the topics that interest you the most. And there's barely any homework as you learn during class as it's educating, meaning educational and entertaining. Edutaining, yeah. We have a lot of fun learning together as well. Now, there's about 100 classes, not including the countless hours of electives. And there's a short quiz, a very short quiz, after all 100 classes, which takes hardly any time to finish. And there's no other homework. But this, this means that this, there's 100 quizzes. And in order to pass and receive the MBA degree, all you need to do is get over 50% on half of the 100 quizzes. And I set it up this way because not all students are interested in the same content. And I really wanted this to be your MBA on your terms. Now, the gold and platinum uh, program students all attend the same classes and Q&A sessions and the same weekly office hours for gold and platinum students, which is every Thursday for two hours from 11.20 a.m. Pacific time until 1.20 p.m. Pacific time. And you have access to the weekly office hours for gold and platinum students forever, even after the MBA ends in December of this year, at no additional cost, of course. And you're also grandfathered into all future MBA programs for free as gold members. So what this means is this. If you purchase the gold or platinum MBA program that starts this January 29th, then you can attend all future MBA programs of mine for free as gold members. And if you're in the Platinum program, you also get three hours of one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with me spread throughout the year. And the one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls are 20 minutes each on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Thursdays between 1.30 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. And during the three hours of one-on-one -on -one meetings, meaning 180, 180 minutes for 20-minute sessions, so nine sessions in total, during the one-on-ones, I will literally write your entire LinkedIn profile if you want me to, and I will humbly and confidentially help you with any business or career-related topic from how to interview or how to ask for a raise or a promotion or how to grow your startup or any other project you want me to help you with. So let's look at the prices and what is included in the gold and platinum program. So let's go together to day one, not one day.com. I'll do this really quickly. Okay, so I'll go here to day one, not one day.com. Okay. All right. And if you scroll down here, you'll see the programs and just details about the programs here. And you can read all this if you want to. There's FAQs and testimonials, et cetera. 
But I want to mention this and highlight this and put this on your radar screen here. Uh, this is gold. This is platinum right here. And if you click this button here, you get 20% off $14.99. So it's $14.99 minus 20%. And for platinum, it's $24.99 minus 20% if you click this button. And this 20% off coupon expires very soon. And as I mentioned before, uh, I'm going to be raising prices materially for all my products uh, after January 29th. Okay, let me go back to the presentation here. Let's now discuss what is included in the MBA program, meaning what do I teach about in the one-year gold and platinum MBA program starting on Monday, January 29th? And so there's six pillars, as you can see, in the program. And I mentioned the brand new uh, technology pillar where I teach you programming as well as AI, Python, and every Excel lecture from scratch. And the technology part of the MBA is brand new, and I'm adding a lot of new technology topics this year. And also, aside from technology, uh, this year I'm also adding a comprehensive real estate elective as well. And in terms of the technology pillar, I actually rented a few Hollywood studios where top movies are made to record this trailer for one of the tech electives. Check it out. I don't know how to say it, so I'm just going to say it. I'm teaching a comprehensive course on Microsoft Excel. But let me tell you, Excel is a magician's hat that pulls out solutions to problems you never thought possible. As a former beta tester wizard for Microsoft, I've created more spreadsheets than stars in the sky. Come with me on a journey that will blow your mind. We're going back to a time when accounting was done with, well, uh, sand. This is 5,000 years ago when the ancient Mesopotamians ruled the world and clay tablets were the ultimate tech. They invented writing and spreadsheets before spreadsheets even existed with wedge-shaped writing called cuneiform pressed into clay tablets. They tracked their trades, taxes, and loans like it was nobody's business. Ugh! I think I'll add new shoes to the miscellaneous expenses column. And then came the paper ledger, the smartphone of the Middle Ages. The first tech revolution that changed the game for accountants and merchants everywhere. It allowed them to record several hundred financial transactions per day, a step up from clay tablets. seemed like spreadsheets had hit the limits. A new technology emerged. Computers with raw power at your fingertips. Programs like VisiCalc and Lotus 123 allowed for thousands of calculations per day. But with great power comes great responsibility. The undo function was yet to be invented. And today, Excel can do billions of calculations per day. So next time you open up the app, remember the journey it took to get here. And who knows where we'll go from here. Join me and unlock your full potential to wield thousands of years of history like a true wizard. Now to access the Excel AI or Python and other elective courses. You can always access them in the last lecture of your MBA degree program. And I love to teach with props, which makes the whole learning process uh, more fun. And I partnered with one of my platinum students, actually, his name is uh, Luca Anison. Uh, and according to Google developers, he's one of the top 150 machine learning and AI experts uh, in the world. He's great. He inspires me, as do many of my uh, MBA students. Let's now talk about uh, the five components, the other five components of the MBA. 
So the second of six pillars is finance and accounting. And I'll teach you finance and accounting from scratch, assuming you have no finance or accounting experience. And if you do have finance or accounting experience, I want you to please forget everything you learned because I'm going to teach you a brand new way, an easier way, and more fun way with lots of props because it's easier and more fun to learn with props and visuals. And all the stuff I teach is based on my work experience on Wall Street, having worked at Goldman Sachs and in the hedge fund industry and the venture capital sector. And I'm going to teach you again how to read financial statements like a good book. I'll teach you about mergers and acquisitions, as well as investment banking. And I'll use lots of real life case studies. And I'll give you so many investing tools and templates so you can analyze any investment before deciding to invest. And so instead of giving you a fish, I teach you how to fish so, you, so that you become a great long-term investor and you make smarter investment decisions. And I don't want you to ever rely on anyone's advice, including mine, on what to buy when you invest. And this is why I'm going to teach you and provide you with many templates so you can decide for yourself. And nobody is smarter than you. And I believe that with my whole heart that I licensed this very short, life-changing interview with Steve Jobs from the Silicon Valley Historical Association here in the San Francisco Bay Area. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and your, your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. Um, but life, that, that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can, you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it, um, that's maybe the most important thing, is to shake off this, uh, th this uh, erroneous notion that life is, is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Um, I, I think that's very important. And however you learn that, once you learn it, uh, you'll want to change life and make it better because it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. Um, once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. Also, in the finance and accounting pillar is a 30-hour elective where I teach you how professional investors do advanced investment and portfolio analysis, and how they use basic and advanced option strategy to protect their money, and of course, make money too. Now, here's a short video about the finance and accounting part of the MBA program. Do you wanna learn all of the practical finance and accounting skills that you need to be successful in a really fun way from scratch? In this track, we cover everything from managing your personal finances to even starting a hedge fund and everything in between. I teach you the basics and the advanced ways to analyze and value companies, create a diversified investment portfolio. I also teach you how to invest in stocks, bonds, commodities, real estate, and even advanced options topics covering derivatives, investing in options, future swaps, and much more. And I promise you, that I will explain it all in a fun and easy to understand way from scratch. You will learn how to use my VFT, meaning Valuation, Fundamental and Technicals Investment Research Framework that uses my specially designed 100 step process and comprehensive brand new state of the art investment template to research and analyze stocks to ensure that you can pick profitable investments in the long run. When you finish this track, you will be able to manage portfolios like professional by using the many financial models and frameworks I provide you with to outperform your competition. Regardless of whether it's your own money, your client's money, or corporate or government portfolios, this track is so comprehensive and enjoyable. You can go from being financially illiterate to a savvy professional investor 
in practically no time at all with the methods that you'll learn to use in these easy to apply lessons. It's never too late to learn how to invest in your future. So please check it out. We can't wait to have you join us. Thank you. The third pillar of the MBA program is entrepreneurship, where I teach you how to start a company or improve your current company. And during the entrepreneurship part of the program, uh, we have a 15 hour, let me get my hat prop here. We have a 15 hour venture capital boot camp where I teach you how to start your company or improve your, co your current company or department if you work at a big company. I also, I also teach you how to raise money, like a student of mine that I mentioned that raised $11.5 million from Tim Draper and others. Um, and Tim Draper was an early investor in Tesla, Baidu, Twitter. Yeah. Now, the venture capital boot camp part of the MBA is based on my work experience in the VC sector, where I invested in Facebook pre-IPO, pre and based on companies I've started and the boot camps I've been a part of at Stanford University. And the Stanford Graduate School of Business MBA program has a venture capital class. And part of the curriculum for several years, I was involved and on panels. And I mentored many Stanford MBA students with their business models while they were doing their MBA at Stanford as part of their curriculum. And all this venture capital knowledge, I will teach you in the entrepreneurship part of the MBA program. Now, here's a very short video on the entrepreneurship track. Over the last decade, there's been an explosion of entrepreneurship with the advancement of technology. The amazing thing is that anybody can start companies now with very little capital and in any country. But sadly, most of these businesses will fail within two years. Now, the difference between success and failure is planning and execution, because failing to plan is planning to fail. In the entrepreneurship track, we have what I call our venture capital boot camp. I guide you through all the practical steps that you need to grow your existing company or launch a new company, including raising money, creating a rock solid go to market business strategy, building your management team, determining the product and or service that you're selling and creating financial statements the easy way. I have a lot of experience with venture capital as I participated as a teacher and a keynote speaker at venture capital events all over the world, including judging business models on many occasions at the Stanford University Graduate School of Business. In the entrepreneurship track of the program, you are given many up-to-date and easy-to-use templates for writing a business plan, including finding your customers, researching your competition, and securing the necessary financials to ensure your company's success. This section is jam-packed with practical skills and knowledge that will give graduates the upper hand in the new economy. Students are provided with the step-by-step -step lessons to launch and execute a successful business idea that will thrive today and in the future. If you've ever dreamed of starting your own business, you'll be armed with the essential tools needed to ensure success. Learn why relationships are more important than product knowledge. And together, let's build your business empire. I'll see you in the program. Thank you. The fourth of six pillars is called sales, marketing, and communications, where I teach you how to sell anything, including yourself. And the best CEOs and entrepreneurs are great salespeople. And I'll teach you how to reinvent yourself and get more customers or a better job and much more. And we study the best entrepreneurs and we don't study theory. And I teach you how to use YouTube or other social media products to enhance your career. I'll also teach you how to communicate better and speak gooder too. And that was awful dad humor. And I, I really do have to apologize because there's a little bit too much dad humor in the MBA program, but that's okay because you got a 30 day 100% money back guarantee. Now in the MBA program, you'll also learn 
how to use the video or audio equipment that you already have to create an incredible Zoom or webcast experience for your viewers from your home. And one of my amazing Platinum students named Evelyn from uh, Minnesota, she just took her career to the next level using the audio and video concepts taught in the MBA program. And Evelyn inspires me so much. And she told me that uh, an amazing Zoom setup at home does the exact same thing for your career that an incredible Italian suit does. And so here's a very quick video on what to expect in the sales, marketing, and communications pillar of the MBA program. Two of the most important skills you need to succeed in your career are the ability to sell and the ability to market yourself. But traditional MBAs place very little, if any, emphasis on this area. They're stuck teaching theories that no longer have any relevance in modern society. In this section of the program called Sales, Marketing, and Communications, you'll learn how to sell, including your products, your services, and most importantly, yourself. I will teach you frameworks for qualifying your leads more effectively, along with an assortment of tips, tools, and techniques that you can use to elevate the value of your offer to your current or potential customers. I will teach you how to sell better than anybody you know. You'll also learn how to communicate effectively during meetings and during presentations, as well as how to appeal to your customers' emotions and how to use empathy as your secret weapon. Inside this track of the program, you'll learn all the skills needed to navigate the modern business landscape and succeed in any job. Don't sell yourself short. Learn how to get what you're worth. Come and check it out for yourself. Thank you. The fifth pillar is called Economics Management and Strategy, where I teach you how global finance works, including how interest rates work and much more, and how the government floods the market with... It's out of money now, but you get the idea. Floods the market... It's fake money. I'm a fake teacher. Floods the money uh, with uh, a market with money in order to issue bonds and change interest rates. We also use many frameworks to analyze companies that top consulting firms like Accenture and McKinsey use to analyze companies. And I provide you with all the arrows, meaning frameworks, in your quiver, all the tools you need so you can work smarter and not harder as you build your empire. Now, here's a short video of what else to expect in this part of the MBA program. Inside the Economics Management and Strategy section of the Harun MBA degree program, we focus on teaching relevant information for the real world. We also examine how governments affect the economy and what that means for investors. In addition, we analyze successful companies and industry leaders' best practices, which you can apply to your career to take your career to the next level. We'll also learn everything there is to know about cryptocurrencies when we take a deep dive into the topic and consider what impact they will have on the financial systems in the future. This section is full of relevant case studies, including Apple potentially buying Nintendo. This section also includes many frameworks and research systems that graduates always rave about that have taken this program because it provides them with actionable lessons that they can put into use right away to greatly impact their future wealth. We also discuss in an entertaining and educational way, fiscal policy, monetary policy, international trade, how to manage and motivate people, and so much more. So take control of your financial future. Success is closer than it seems. Join us now and learn how to achieve your future dreams faster. I'll see you on the inside of the program. Thank you. In the sixth and final pillar, we have personal growth, where I help you accomplish much more every single day using this template here and many other templates that I provide you with. And I provide you with this in many file formats as well. And this will help you accomplish so much more while being well-rounded, so you have more time for exercise, spending time with your loved ones, playing GTA 6, et cetera, and so much more. I, I got a roster, okay. 
you're not going to see me for at least a month in 2025. Because the second that GTA 6 is, is out, that's how we say in Canada, it's not out, it's out. I, I'm going to play that 24-7. Okay. Anyway, let me get back on track here. Sorry. Um, but this is really important, scheduling your, your days and goal setting, because if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person, which will be you. And I help you with conquering any lack of confidence we might have that are holding us back from reaching our full potential. And I teach you how to network and make the best LinkedIn profile and resume too, so you can get the job or customers or investors of your dreams. And your network is your net worth and relationships are crucial in business. And so I'll teach you how to network on steroids. And I humbly believe that the personal growth track is more helpful than the six other or five other uh, pillars uh, in the MBA program. Much more valuable. I love teaching with, with props, yeah. So here's our sixth and final video uh, on what the personal growth pillar is all about. Welcome to the personal growth track of the program where you will develop a crystal clear image of the person and future you truly desire. You will learn how to identify and create a blueprint for the future that you want. Now, in this track, you will redefine your image of yourself and grow your confidence by pushing your limits. You'll also be able to market yourself far more effectively because you will have developed the inner belief that fuels your dreams. You will gain improved communication skills that will have a lasting positive impact, both personally and professionally, for the rest of your life so that you can get the dream job or change careers, or get promoted, and so much more. Get the confidence and tools you need to create the life that you want. Make the best decision you can make for your future, and join me. Thank you. Let's talk about topic two of three, which is some frequently asked questions about the MBA program. One question I get quite often is, can I take the program if I have no knowledge of business or finance or accounting concepts, absolutely. No prior knowledge is required. We have many doctors and engineers and MBA graduates from top schools that take my MBA program, and they always say they learned way more in my program at a fraction of the cost. And we've had graduates that are in their early 20s and in their early 70s from all over the world, and all with unique backgrounds that really enhances the student body from a networking perspective. Another question I get is, what if I don't have enough time to watch classes or do the, the short quizzes? And do I need to quit my job? No, you don't have to quit your job because you only have to take half of the quizzes and get over 50% in order to pass. Also, you don't have to do the program in one year. You can take as long as you want to. This is a flexible and affordable MBA program that you can take on your own terms. And you have access to all the content and new content I add forever. And you don't need a university degree to register for my MBA program. Another question I get is, are there opportunities to network with other students? Absolutely, using Slack and Zoom and in our in-person graduation and networking events. And here's a short video from two of our in-person graduation ceremonies, which students attended in person or they watched the live webcast. And you don't have to graduate to attend these graduation slash networking events. Good morning to my amazing Global MBA family. So you now officially have everything you need to build something far bigger than yourself, okay? And so we are now 100% done the MBA degree program. Congratulations. From this is song is my hometown. Next up we've got Christian Chang. end this MBA degree program right now on this positive note. And I want you to get up and start working on architecting your perfect life 
armed with what you've learned in this MBA degree program. And more importantly, armed with this new empowering belief that you have in yourself. Now, this is not the end. It is not the beginning of the end. It is perhaps the end of the beginning. Believe in yourself and think with your heart first. Any past or present gold or platinum student can attend our graduation and networking events in person, even if you haven't graduated yet. And during the two-day event, I also do in-person in -person one -on -one meetings with my platinum students. Another question I get is, is the Haroon MBA degree program accredited? No. Because accredited traditional old school MBA programs don't help you achieve your full potential and they don't teach you practical business concepts that make you successful. And government accreditation means that I would have to have a board that will make me teach theoretical concepts that you won't use in the real world. And here's what business icons have to say about an accredited traditional old school MBA programs. Let's kick it off with Elon Musk, who said, as much as possible, avoid hiring MBAs. MBA programs don't teach you how to create companies. Our position is that we hire someone in spite of an MBA, not because of one. And Sheryl Sandberg, who was the COO of Facebook, said, While I got great value from my experience, MBAs are not necessary at Facebook, and I don't believe they are important for working in the tech industry. And Guy Kawasaki, great guy, uh, who was an early Apple employee, said, For every full-time engineer, add $500,000 in company value. For every full-time MBA, subtract $250,000. Peter Thiel, who's a top venture capitalist in the world, uh, said this of traditional MBA schools, never hire an MBA, <laughs> they will ruin your company. And Mark Andreessen, who's also a top venture capitalist here in Silicon Valley, and I met with him uh, and he was actually on a board I was on when I worked in VC, but he said this, MBA graduating classes are actually a reliable indicator. If they all wanna go into investment banking, there's going to be a financial crisis. If they all want to go into technology, that means a bubble is forming. And Scott Cook, who's a Harvard MBA and the founder of Intuit, had this to say. When MBAs come to us, we have to fundamentally retrain them. Nothing, nothing they learned will help them succeed at innovation. Lastly, the number one marketing guru on the planet, Seth Godin, who is also a Stanford MBA, he went to Stanford, he said this, an MBA has become a two-part machine. First, students are taught everything they need to know to manage a company from 1990. And second, they're taken out of the real world. And so I would love to have you join us in my gold or platinum MBA program that starts on January 29th. And so please go to day1notoneday.com per the web address you see here. Please go to that website to learn more and sign up. Uh, we have lots of testimonials at that website from graduates. And feel free to reach out to any Haroon Gold or Platinum MBA graduates on LinkedIn too, or just Google my name, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and you might have other questions about uh, certain topics uh, covered in the MBA program or not. Now, the best way to answer this is two ways. Number one, let me show you here. Number one, you can go to this website, day1notoneday.com, uh, and then click here, enroll today. Uh, it won't take you to the checkout page first, but you'll be able to see the curriculum. So scroll down, check out the curriculum after you click these buttons here. The second way is you can set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me. And you can do this by going here to the top of this, this website here, day1notoneday.com. And then you can click right here to set up a, a Zoom call with me. Yeah. And you can purchase the Gold and Platinum program today at day1notoneday.com. And again, positions are limited and I've got a discount available, as I mentioned, of 20% off uh, right here for gold or platinum, which expires very soon. And again, prices for all my MBA programs will be rising materially uh, after this class begins on January 29th, all my products, yeah. And if you have additional questions, you can either ask me in a few minutes using YouTube chat or using Zoom. And I'll explain how to get onto Zoom uh, in a minute. Let me go back here to my slides. 
Okay, cool. All right. So we have students from all over the world that have taken and benefited from the program. Um, rather than me reading all of these, you could go to that website, day one, not one day, and scroll down to read them. But but I've got Eileen Dale Gracias, who's got the best last name ever. Her last name, Dale Gracias, is Spanish for thank God. And she's based in Atlanta. Uh, I met with her when I went there with my family recently. She said, the MBA has completely changed my outlook in life and in business. We've got uh, Dr. Mark Vincent Besa from the Philippines. He said, the MBA is one of a kind where practicality is taught and we learn exactly how successful companies uh, are built. Uh, we have students uh, uh, from the United States, of course, Dave Capel. He's from France originally. I met him and his family a couple of years ago. Good dude. Uh, we got students from India. Here's Akil. Uh, I put Mark in there twice. Sorry. That was a senior moment. The older I get, the better I was. Um, we have uh, Stella from South Korea, uh, Yoshida-san from Japan, uh, Vital uh, from Germany, who I built that school in Rwanda with. Um, we have uh, Asan from uh, Pakistan. Uh, Jason uh, uh, from Australia, he was the head of the Alumni Association uh, for a year. Good guy. And his son actually uh, interned with me as well. And we have Doris from the United Kingdom, uh, Lamarck uh, uh, from the Philippines, uh, Dante from Canada, uh, and Portugal. We have, we have students from all over the world that, that have taken this. Yeah, let me go here, fast forward here. All right, great. Now, I spent over a million dollars on the program so far. And you can take the program on a laptop, a desktop, a tablet, or your phone. And all lectures have the highest quality closed captions added. And I recorded all lectures from five different uh, camera angles. It's beautifully edited as, as well. Uh, and so right here, you can see this is the class, uh, the backdrop of the class, uh, where we do a case study on Nintendo as well. And each lesson has a unique background with many props to make the learning environment fun and engaging. That's Mr. Buffett over there. Um, uh, and then if I go back here, we do a case study on Coca-Cola as, as well. Um, yeah, so the backgrounds are, are, are different just to make it more fun uh, and, and engaging uh, as well. Um, and here we did a, a case study. We, we talked about a lot of VR products uh, as well. And Apple is coming out uh, with their new product, uh, their new AR slash VR product. Uh, it goes on sale at 5 a.m. Uh, January 19th, I believe. And you can get it for February 2nd, which is my birthday. And yes, I'm going to get up early and order because I'm a nerd. Yeah. All right. Before I answer uh, your YouTube chat questions and before I answer uh, Zoom questions, uh, let's move on to, to the free gifts. Okay. I think I have it right here. Yeah. So let me click here to get the address for you. There we go. Great. So please go to the web address you see right here, all lowercase, harunmba.com slash zoomday1, all lowercase, to get your two gifts. And the two gifts are as follows. Let me go there with you, actually. harunmba.com slash zoomday1, all lowercase. There we go. Great. Okay. So here, here are the gifts. So gift number one right here is a course of mine called the Complete Personal Finance Course. Click here to get it for free. Gift number two is a course called Introduction to Finance, Accounting, Valuation, and Modeling. You can click right here to get this course for free as well. And at the top of this website here uh, is uh, uh, where you get the, the two free courses. Uh, you can click right here to join the Zoom call if you wanna ask questions. Now, while I wait for people to join Zoom, uh, I'll open up Zoom in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short trailer from a course that I'm giving away for free today called uh, Introduction to Finance, Accounting, Modeling, and Valuation. All right, so please join Zoom. I'll see you guys in a minute. Thanks. When you think of accounting and finance, what comes to mind? Don't worry. This is not my course. I have something just a little more special planned for you. Do you want to learn about accounting and finance in a way that you've never been taught before? Of course you do. My visual approach will teach you everything you need to know, and it will be a lot of fun. In fact, you'll wonder why you weren't taught this way in school. Oh, and if you get a moment, please check out the student reviews to see how so many people have enjoyed the learning experience. And you know what the best part is? No experience is necessary to take this course. So if you don't know how to model and value a company, analyze a cash flow statement, or understand the difference between growth and value investing, not to worry. We will cover all of those concepts from scratch. So why should you learn accounting and finance from me? 
I have an MBA in finance from Columbia University. But more importantly, I have work experience in the real world, from Goldman Sachs to several hedge funds to venture capital and consulting firms. I've raised and managed over $1 billion in my career. Now I'm passionate about sharing my knowledge and experience. My life has turned full circle from my own education to my experience in business, to investing in and founding several companies. Instead of teaching boring finance and accounting theory, I teach based on my own real life practical experience. And it has led me right here to you. I want you to understand how to create, analyze and forecast an income statement, a balance sheet and a cash flow statement. I want you to thoroughly understand and enjoy finance and accounting so that you can be inspired to achieve all of your career goals. I have the tools needed to get the job done. So let's do it. I'll see you in class. All right, time for Zoom. Uh, if you guys wanna join Zoom, uh, please please do so. Um, I've got a couple of students here uh, that, that have questions. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do, uh, Renvir, did you want me to take a look at your, your LinkedIn profile? Sure. Okay, great. And if anybody wants to join Zoom to ask questions uh, about the upcoming gold or platinum MBA program that starts uh, on, on Monday, uh, uh, January 29th, please do. Okay, so we have Renvir here from uh, Mauritius, um, and he uh, asked me to take a look uh, at his LinkedIn profile. So let me do a quick review here uh, of the LinkedIn profile uh, for Renvir. Okay. If anybody has questions, just, just raise your hand, please. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to LinkedIn here and take a look at Renvir's profile right here. Here we go. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this in a generic way to the extent that um, it'll, it'll help everybody on this call. So the first thing I like to do is I go to the very bottom of the profile to make sure that you don't follow any politicians, right? Meaning uh, anybody that could imply uh, that you're, you know, Democrat or, or Republican, because half the people might like you more than the other half. I'm not sure what, what half. Okay, so let me take a look here. Okay. All good. All good. Great. All right. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the companies you follow and the groups. Now, Renvir, to make it um, easier for me to humbly give you advice on your LinkedIn profile, tell me the type of executive who's going to be looking at your LinkedIn profile. We're still a CEO and CFO of companies. CEO and CFO. Okay, what, what, what kind of companies? <clears throat> Any kind of companies that is looking for to increase their productivity using AI. Okay, AI. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, great. So I would probably, let's see if you're following any AI companies. So I want your profile to show the eat, sleep and breathe AI companies. Um, so I would follow NVIDIA and you can always look at the, um, the AI ETF we talked about earlier today and follow all the companies in that ETF. Okay, good. And you can reorder these as well to put all the AI mentions at the top here. Good, good, good. Okay, great. Next up, we've got your skills. So what I recommend doing here is add AI here and you can also reorder these, okay? You can drag them to the top and make sure that you endorse your friends, uh, people that know you business-wise as well, so they'll endorse you as well. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have between five and 10 um, recommendations uh, written about you. So let, let, me, let me show you an example. So I have a, a student of mine uh, that graduated from the Platinum program a couple of years ago, uh, and I helped her create her profile. And her name is Dr. Dion. Let's see if it comes up here. Here we go, good. Okay. So what I recommend doing is getting a number of recommendations written for you like, like Dion has done, okay? Um, I also recommend making sure uh, that you have um, a, a thorough write-up here about you. And I helped uh, Dion uh, to, to write this, mainly her. Um, she was a, a platinum student. And when you write this, what you want to do, 
And this is the, the most important field in your LinkedIn profile. It's index people search for it. And this is important as well, your title. But when you write your, your LinkedIn summary, what you want to do is you want to pretend that you're about to give a keynote speech. And the person organizing that keynote speech asks you, do you have a bio I can read to introduce you? And that is exactly what your summary section should be about. You want to use great parallel construction as well, no more than three sentences per paragraph. And you want to make sure it's less than 500 words. And you want to be incredibly, have a, an incredibly impactful first sentence. So here's what we came up with for, for Dion. Uh, Dr. Dion's career and education has always been at the intersection of the liberal arts and sciences. In addition to working for the Olympic Committee globally, she also has extensive experience on Broadway with more than 10 productions, including The Lion King, Hamilton, Cats, and Chicago. So she certainly differentiates herself versus other candidates. Uh, and Caroline, uh, who I know is from France, I, I asked uh, Dion if she worked on Less Miserables, and she did not. Okay, sorry, that's bad, bad, bad humor. Yeah. Um, and then at the end here, what we did was we put an incredible quote that Dion came up with. Um, so it's empowering at the end. And she wrote this. Something really amazing happens when we, when we stop, confront, and own our pain ourselves. We start to harness an incredible power called resilience. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for your patience with me. I'm getting my exercise in as we do the Zoom call. Okay. Helps me think and speak gooder. Now, uh, uh, Renvier, what I recommend here is at the top, <coughs> similar to what Dion has, I want you to use a picture okay, uh, that you can get from stock images on Adobe or anywhere really which has three layers. And the reason I mention that is because Steve Jobs used to talk about the rule of thirds. And the most pleasant uh, or, uh, photographs have three layers, like the ones you see with, with, with the, the beach, the ocean, and the sky. Okay, so something empowering like, like this. And it can be based on the sector of that, that you work in as, as well. So what I'm going to do is go here to the top. That's nice. That's cool. I would probably add something a little bit more AI-based, uh, to this as well. And yeah. um, if you want, do you want me to create one for you? Uh, sure. Okay, yeah. great. All right, let's do this. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Adobe Images. And I'm going to choose an image that is incredibly empowering for you. Now, just to tee this up, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the dimensions here of, of this so I can create it in Photoshop. I'll show you in a second exactly what this means. Yeah. So I'm going to go over here to the image I just did a screenshot of. Okay, here it is here. Copy. And then over here in Photoshop, I'm going to use the same dimensions, meaning that. Okay, great. So let's find something now on Adobe, uh, a, a website about AI that's somewhat inspiring. So I'll search here for AI. Because the first impression people get of you is when I look at that image at the top, along with your profile picture uh, and the, your title as well. So what we're looking yeah. for is something that's inspiring, but not creepy, <laughs> that maybe has uh, three layers uh, for, for AI. Um, what do you think of this one here? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool, huh? Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look to see if there's different renditions of it. All right, give me one second. AI, AI, AI. Oh, that might be the one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to license this for you. Um, and then I am going to download it. And then once it's downloaded, we're going to put it directly into, um, into Photoshop. And then we'll make that your new LinkedIn profile picture at the top. Okay. So I'm going to go to downloads here. Again. Good. And I'll drag this over here. Good. It's going to be a bigger image. Give it a second to generate. Good. Great. And then what I'll do is I will grab this uh, over here. Okay. That might work. Okay. Let me, let me see if I can make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that, that could work. Okay, good. Then I'm going to export this and you can upload this if you want to. Uh, directly to your, your profile. So I'm going to export as a, as a PNG. Make sure it's not too big. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll save it on my desktop here. And I'll call it Renvir. Good. And then what I'll do is I'll email it to you. 
And and what's your what's your email address? Give me one second. If you if you don't want to disclose it, just let me know. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. From Okay, sure. Oh, there we go. I have it. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this image to you uh, and then please upload this image here to your profile and then we'll talk about the next steps and I'll send it from my Gmail account so it gets there faster. Done. So let me know when you've refreshed that and added that uh, to your profile, please. Okay. Now, in terms of your your, your title, picture is good. In terms of your title, um, I would capitalize this AI. I know it's silly, but entrepreneur, right. investor, that, that works. Um, and then what you want to do, let me see contact details. You want to make sure that you get, um, you can reserve uh, a, a more accurate uh, LinkedIn profile, a link here. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you can set it up so you don't have all these numbers at the end. Uh, and then what you can do is obviously you can put that uh, at the top of your resume if you want to. Yeah. And I would actually set up a website uh, which has samples of your work. I know you've mentioned before uh, that you've created uh, GPTs uh, for marketing executives so they can cut back on sales and marketing expenses. So I would create a website. And and when you create the website, what I want you to do is to have your email affiliated with your website. It makes you sound, look more credible. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll show you an example. So what, what I do is is this here. You see all these emails here? Mm-hmm. So this yeah. all is from my uh, from my website, and it's really cheap to set these up here, and it's simple to add them directly to uh, 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 to Gmail, right? So, for example, if I were to send a message to myself or anybody from admissions test, whatever, it comes through right here, and it and it appears like it came from admissions, which which it did. Yeah. yeah. Now now in terms of setting up your own website, uh, what I recommend that you do is that you use Squarespace, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's it's easy to use and there's plenty of templates as well. And you can get up and running with this uh, within 24 hours. So all you have to do, let me write, type here AI, next. Let me just skip everything here. But anyway, you, you choose tons of different templates they have for you. Um, and then yeah. what you can do is on this website for the contact section, um, you can have uh, different email addresses. Okay, great. All right, so we're done with that. Let me now go back here to your profile uh, section. So what I recommend you do is make your pro summary section here uh, similar to how we set it up for Dr. Dion Vernon, meaning 500 yep. words or less, okay? Three sentences per paragraph. And let me know if you've added that image at the top here yet. <clears throat> yep, I just added it. You just did, let me refresh the outlooks. Okay, looks good. I like it. And you certainly you want to test it also uh, on on mobile. It's a different form factor to see if that image still works there. Great. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's see here. Yeah, I would add work experience here as well. Okay, and, and okay. I know that you 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 have work experience, so I would add it here as well. Uh, and then once you add that work experience, then it's going to be a lot easier to create the summary section here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you can even use ChatGPT for this. It's really cool. So so check this out. So this is Dion's and, and we wrote this. Uh, she was a platinum student from uh, years ago. So watch this. What I'm going to do is I am going to copy all of this and then we're going to use ChatGPT to write um, to write a summary section for her. And this this will blow your mind. Give me a second to tee this up. Okay. Copy, 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 copy. Get all her work experience in the clipboard here. Okay. Copy. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to chat GPT. Okay. And then right here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type exactly this. Below is work experience from my LinkedIn profile. Write an impactful summary section that I, don't worry about typos, that I can add to the LinkedIn profile summary section. 300 words max, no more than three sentences 
per paragraph. Make the first sentence inspiring. Assume the reader is a CEO that wants to hire me to do consulting work. Okay, and now I'm gonna paste this here, paste. Okay, and here's what ChatGPT came up with. Remember, we don't want more than three sentences per paragraph. Um, we want the first sentence to be very impactful, otherwise they won't read the rest. And we don't want this to be more than 300 words. Here we go, paragraph one, two, three. So let's go through this real quick. In a world where optimal health and peak performance are, are paramount, oh, I like it. I stand as a beacon of innovation and empowerment in the field of physical therapy and wellness. As the founder of Healing Compass Wellness Group, I've dedicated over five years all, all this stuff here, right? So it, it does it here, talks about her experience uh, in China where she worked uh, and her team actually won a gold medal uh, uh, here, uh, talks about what she's done in New York City, uh, et cetera. Um, and the last sentence, as a, vi as a visionary in the physical therapy and wellness sector, I'm eager to bring my unique blend of clinical expertise, innovative problem solving, and empathetic leadership, I love that word, to your organization, driving forward your mission of health and excellence. So this is money, this is good. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. So hopefully that, that helps you. Let, let me go to your, your profile here to see if you have any other questions. Um, and if anybody has questions, uh, please raise uh, your hand and thank you as always. Okay, let me see here. I want you to start writing, okay? And in the MBA yeah. program, we, we talk about uh, how to write like a journalist does. I have my own column in Forbes magazine. Uh, so I have a lot of experience mm -hmm. in that area. I also used to have my own column when I worked in venture capital uh, at Inc. Magazine. Yeah. And McGraw-Hill is publishing my, my book, my finance book, actually. It comes out April 1st, no joke. Um, so I teach you that stuff based on my humble experience. Um, but what I want you to do is I want you to write a lot. And I want you, and what I did actually, and so Gary Vaynerchuk always talks about repurposing content. Okay, so yeah. what I did uh, back in 2013, 14, 15, was every week for one or two years, maybe it was two or three years, I wrote an article on something I'm passionate about, which is better business school uh, education. And I published 104 articles on LinkedIn over two years. And then the articles that got the most clicks, likes, comments, et cetera, I put at the beginning of this book and I repurposed all that stuff. And I also repurposed all these chapters into vlogs and TikToks and Instas and all that stuff as well. So it's a way to work smarter, not harder. So what I want you to do is I want you to become a, a writer and I want you to think like a thought leader. The way you, you become a thought leader is you, it's like the road dance culture, I think they're probably am. And I want you to write. I want you to write one article per week. And you can use ChatGPT if you want to, but be careful. Uh, make sure that mm -hmm. it's it's actually in your style. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then um, I want you to write lots of articles. And a lot of people mm -hmm. that, that do this, it's, it's a way to become a thought leader. And then you can actually give away your book for free. And that will help you build your email list. It's a call to action, so to speak, on your website that you're mm -hmm. going to develop if you want to through Squarespace. Um, yeah. So most people that, that start on this journey, um, will give up after a couple of months. They'll, they feel like they're screaming into the wind because they're not getting that many views, etc. Yeah. I want you to think long-term like Buffett does and tell yourself it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I want you to write one article every week. Okay. Um, okay. and at the yeah. end of each article, if you want to, you can write something like this. You know, please come to my website, you know, check out a course of mine, get it for free. Uh, or what mm -hmm. you can do is um, you can download my book from this website as, as well. And then okay. you collect emails. Now, obviously, you have to be compliant with GDPR uh, when it comes to unsubscribing. But by developing the brand of you, Renvir, uh, when it comes to AI, um, it's free to do. And if you if you write enough and you publish enough vlogs, etc., then over a year, two or three, you'll be thought of as a thought leader. And it's a great way for you to get business for your AI consulting firm. Yeah. Now on your website, you wanna showcase what you've done as well. Even if it's prototypes, even if you don't have customers, just show, uh, yeah. showcase a, a couple of them. Uh, and I promise you after a while it'll work. 
Then what I want you to do is once you get reference customers like big banks or big companies, whatever, I want you to list those on your website. Okay. One reference customer can put you on the map. And that's why I do the, the top of my website as well. Just the media publications humbly that, that I've been in. Yeah. Now yeah. I want you to create a uh, YouTube vlogs and TikToks as well. Repurpose on different platforms as Gary Vaynerchuk talks about. And then eventually, like if you help other people and you're a thought leader, then good things happen. But you have to, and, and I know you have a big heart because I've talked to you a, a gazillion times before uh, on this weekly Zoom here, uh, but you want to help people. And after you give, you'll receive. It's prophetic. It's been true since the beginning of time. Give uh, and, and you'll receive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully that uh, makes can, sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can yeah. you tell me again, where can I find this uh, a course but the LinkedIn article? Sorry, say that again. The the where where can I find the course about the Oh it's it's LinkedIn. it's it's the MBA it's in the curriculum of the MBA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, which module? Yeah. So what you can do is go to the curriculum, okay? And yeah. then search for journalist or search for writing and you'll find it there. Yeah. Yeah. And what Thanks. I also did uh, on, on my website uh, was um, and I'm just beta testing this here. And it might be tough to see here, um, but it, in the bottom right-hand corner uh, on my website here, and I think there might be a lower third covering this up, but I've got a chat bot and you can ask questions here. Um, and this cost me 20 bucks a month. It's using chat GPT. Um, and actually the entire closed caption curriculum is, is in here as well. So you can always ask yeah. questions like this. Give me five tips on how to write like a journalist. And this will be a nice review of, of what's discussed in the course. Okay. Yeah. So, and this, this sounds like me because it is me. Structure your writing. Use three sentences per paragraph. Okay. Catchy titles. I talk about that. Um, I talk about amazing thumbnails, uh, et cetera. And write from the heart. Keep it simple. Less is more. And what my, um, what my editor told me years ago, uh, when I had an article, I had my own column in Inc. Magazine. Um, he told me, Chris, stop trying to write like you're writing for The Economist. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I want you to think about a large total adjustable market like USA Today, for example. And I want you to write at an eighth grade level. That's what he told me, which is easy for me because that's my maturity anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Let's go next to uh, Caroline. Caroline, please. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Hey. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me, Chris? Yeah, it's a little bit louder. Um, I'll try to adjust it on, on my end here. It's on my side. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want you to... Um, yeah, we need to like that book. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I'm, you know, when you um, um, recommend a book, I'm thinking, oh, it might be yeah. too, too hard for me to read or something. But this is yeah. very an easy read. It's really yeah. fun. It's a good one. And, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, anyway, so then Del Carnegie, he mentioned something about um, he, when he got started in the uh, stock market, so he got some uh, stock and he didn't do well at all. Mm -hmm. He lost money uh, to his friend and everything. So anyway, mm -hmm. but then later on, he adopted a new technique. And um, if the, the stock uh, will go down, let's say 5%, it would sell. But, you know, he had the automatic, uh, I don't know the mm -hmm. term, Mm -hmm. When you automatically um, sell your stock or you know mm -hmm. or stop, buy stop loss or whatever, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he did much better. Yeah. Anyway, so what do you think of that tip? I thought it was interesting. Yeah. So a, a couple of things. Number one, the book that Carolyn's referring to, I, I mentioned that Carolyn a few weeks ago. It's by Dale Carnegie. It's called How to How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. It's a great read. The bottom line message of that book uh, from Dale Carnegie is to live your life in day tight compartments, meaning don't worry about the past. You can't control it. Don't worry too much about the future if it's stuff you can't control. Live for today. And that's how I live my life as well. Uh, in terms of, of the other question you have, uh, in terms of dollar cost averaging or stop losses, um, what I recommend doing is in the MBA degree program, uh, you can go to EMS 4-2. That's Economics Management and Strategy Semester 4 Class 2. And in that class, I have a 100-step um, Excel document I created for you um, where it actually helps you do investment research on a company. And basically three things come out of it. Number one, 
a one-page executive summary that summarizes the 1,000 questions or so you answered as part of the curriculum on that company. And that one-pager basically uh, summarizes the fundamentals, okay, uh, valuation, and technical analysis of the company. Okay, technical analysis is a tiny part of it. That's the first uh, output. The second output is a 100 plus page investment research report. Um, and the third thing or three, as my son Andrew used to say, is a dashboard that visually shows you everything you need to know about the company from a high level perspective. So hopefully that answers your question. Now, speaking of, of books, uh, there, there's another book that, that I wanna recommend. Um, give me one second, I've got it over here. I just bought it and I bought a copy for my son uh, as well. It's called One Up on Wall Street. And I think you'd enjoy this one, Carolyn. Um, so uh -huh. it's written by Peter Lynch, uh, who is the portfolio manager at the Fidelity Magellan Fund back in the 80s and 90s. He made a killing. And he talks about how to use what you already know about products or companies to make money. And that's the essence of his philosophy, which works. The subtitle of the book is as follows. How to use what you already know to make money in the market. And basically, he gives examples of how he and his wife used to try products before investing in the company. And you'll probably notice that the companies that you've done best on, historically speaking, uh, from an investment perspective, are the ones where you've actually used the product. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you have an iPhone and you own Apple for years, for example. Yeah. Uh, it helps you a lot from a due diligence perspective. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Of course. Always good to yeah. get good recommendations from you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Now, question here, and you guys can type questions if you want uh, over YouTube uh, YouTube Live. Uh, question here is is from Sophia who wrote, uh, can I rejoin gold for the 29th of January? Yeah, absolutely. So anybody that signs up or has signed up or will sign up to my gold or platinum MBA degree program, you're grandfathered in. And that means this. If you buy gold or platinum, you can always join future classes as a gold member for free forever. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. What's next? Anybody here have questions on Zoom? We got Brian. Brian, how are you? Good. Um, and I, I want to... Sorry. It's okay. It's all good, man. Good. It's, good, good, good today's good. been busy with work. Yeah, good, good, so good I just to had... see you. Good to see. And last time I talked to Brian, he had uh, on, on his wall behind him, like he had Spider-Man number one and a bunch of priceless comic books. And he also owns a Salvador Dali and Picasso as, as well. So he is a an incredible collector and a great investor as well. Yeah. And, and, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So um, I don't know how this will work, but I want to screen share mood.com mm -hmm. sure. and get your opinion on what I've designed. Oh, for business and cards. Yeah. Yeah. Your, yeah. For business cards. Because you spoke a lot about that in yeah. one of your classes. Yeah. yeah. And I have just spent two weeks researching business cards, learning everything I could possibly learn. Yeah. And this is what I have. Yeah, go, uh, let me see if I, go for it. Yeah. Show me. Uh, and just to tee this up, so moo.com, M-O-O.com is a website where you can get really high quality business cards created for you. I know it's old school, but we still need business cards. Uh, I recommend getting the smaller ones that have a QR code uh, on one side of it so people can link directly to your LinkedIn profile. Now, the way to create a, a QR code, if you're not sure how to do it, let me share my screen, I'll show you exactly how to do it. So what, what I recommend doing is, uh, I recommend uh, installing the Edge browser by Microsoft. Uh, now, this works on Mac now, uh, as well as of course on Windows. And then what you do is, whatever website you're on here, so I'm just gonna click on Saturday Night, some Saturday Night Live thing here, yeah. Um, so say you wanna link to this page. You right click here, okay? Uh, and then you go here, create QR code for this page. And here it is right here. And so if anybody is watching this webcast, you can pause it right now. Whoops. If anybody is watching this webcast, you can pause it right now and then go to uh, that QR code uh, that I just showed and it will lead directly to that page. Give me one second. I wanna go, oh, you shared screen. That's why this happened. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, sorry about that. No, no, I'm still figuring. No, no, all, 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 all good. All good. It's my, my issue, not yours. Yeah. Okay. So this here is your your business card that you're designing. So this is the back of the card. Yeah. Let's see the front. And then the front. I have a few choices because I don't know where to go. Yeah. I don't. I decide I don't want to do logo. I want it minimalistic and I yeah. want it to be yeah straight yeah. to the point. Yeah. Um, after reading a lot of things, I don't want to put owner or managing director or anything like that. I figured investment advisor is yeah. good enough. Yeah, that's simplistic. I, I like it. I prefer smaller ones than that. 
so um, let, let me share my screen. Um, and, and I'll show you what, what I recommend doing. And I recommend putting a QR code on it as, as well because a lot of people you know, will take the business card and lose it. But if there's a QR code, they'll be able to see your LinkedIn profile uh, directly. So what I'm going to do okay. is uh, I'm going to share my screen. Question just popped up on, on YouTube here. Jose, hey, Jose wrote, do you plan on retiring anytime soon? Never. I'm never retiring ever. Ever. Yeah. Many people on this call are going to live to 150. It's a fact. And the average life expectancy today is 20, 26 years longer than it was uh, back in the 1950s. So although I turn 52 uh, on February 2nd, I'm actually 26 with the maturity of a five-year-old. Okay, so, so, so let me share here my, my desktop. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna go over here to Safari. Good, all right. So I'm gonna go to moo.com. Now, the business cards that, that I prefer getting that worked for me is something that differentiate yourself, okay? So something small like this here, you see right here? Whoops, right, right here, this guy here. So I would do a small card like that. It's better for the environment too. And on one side, I would have your investment advisor and all the text you had. And on the other side, maybe have this, or you can even put it on, on the front side as well. Yeah, let less is more. Yeah, yeah. So here it is here. You're gonna, you're gonna choose uh, this one here if, if you want to. Again, it differentiates you. Um, and then I, I would create it this way. And you can use some color too if, if, if you want. I think it might be the same pricing point. Uh, get, get a thick one if you can. Uh, it's just, it's, I think it's nicer. Yeah. yeah. And if you buy in bulk. Yeah. So the thickness, yeah. I was trying to decide. Yeah. Oh, they, um, they, they, brought, they, they brought. point or yeah. 32. Which one do you recommend? I know not to do 14 or anything less. So I would 16 get, I would get the, 32. I get the thickest one. It's just, it just, I don't know. It's, it, it I, I, that's just what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and it, should I, yeah. I do both the small one and the regular size one? Because I, I the other one I did is a little bit bigger. Yeah. No, because I, it would pick yeah. out bigger than the other business cards. Yeah. I would just do the smaller ones because people will remember it. Yeah. Yeah. And and, okay. it, and a business card in, in a lot of cultures, a you know, business card is sacred. It represents who you are. Um, and so um, when I used to work uh, in Japan, when I was I was at Goldman Sachs, I'd go over there and meet with companies. Um, whenever somebody met me, uh, they would take my business card. Um, and they would always go, how'd you manage to? And they would read the whole thing, right? So it's, and then when you meet with people, uh, it, when, you, when you're at, say you're at a, a meeting and you're meeting with five people and you just met them and it's hard for me to remember names. What I usually do is I take the cards and I put them based on the order they're sitting in. And when I'm trying to talk to them and I forgot their name, I might get a sip of water and look down at their name. Uh, and then username when, when talking is as is, is, is well. Yeah. And you never want to write on a business card because of many cultures. Uh, that's, uh, that's offensive. Yeah. Cool. Chris, then, uh, so, sorry, Brian. Oh, no, I was going to say, with the small ones, uh -huh. would you think, because I was thinking of those, if I hole punch those and put a card sheet chain link on it, like the ring circle, and then people can attach it to their uh, keys. I'm trying to find a way that people aren't going to yeah. throw these things away because I'm trying to throw um, yeah. most of them get thrown you could be you could be expensive. really yeah you can be really innovative so those ones i just looked at for you the price is 18 cents for the highest skewer 21 cents um and and i remember when i when i used to work in venture capital i give have business cards i think to myself is this this is awful but is this person worth should i really spend yes. 20? yeah you know you know what i mean yeah uh but what you can be incredibly creative as well and you can get usb token once and let me show you an example so let's go here to and i always like to use safari so I'm going to go here to USB business card. Okay. So let, let's check it out here. USB business cards. So something like this, that doesn't look cheesy. Um, and you can, and, and Brian, I know I've, I've talked to you before and you've made some incredible Excel dashboards that help a lot of your investors uh, invest with portfolio management stuff. You can actually put that on here as well. And you can share it with them. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's yeah. great. I didn't yeah. think of, I'm doing a new one for the San Francisco yeah. client. Yeah. I'm creating the Excel program just yeah. for his whole family. Here's what you can do. This will this will wow him. I know you're coming here soon uh, to meet with them, and I'm looking forward to meet you in person if you have time for coffee. But what you can do is, based on whoever it is you're meeting in the Bay Area, your business card should be customized for them. It's really easy. All you, You'll have a bunch of cards with USBs on them. 
and you'll plug it into your computer, drag and drop their portfolio okay, uh, for them uh, or a model portfolio or whatever it is onto this card. Yeah. Yeah. How long does that take to get here? So Will they open it, something like that? Yeah, you Because I have to leave in a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see here. Probably takes a while to create. Um, okay. Let me go here to... You might have to call them. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just it, it's more of a this. customized thing. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure there are competitors out there that will do it faster, cheaper as, as well. Yeah, cool. But that's just one idea to help you stand out. Yeah. Flash Bay. Okay, I'll yeah. write that down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I guess the magnet one are too cheesy. The magnet for the fridge? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. But but there's a lot of really innovative ones. It, it, it's fascinating to see how people differentiate themselves by using business cards. So watch this. Innovative business cards. And let's just what look about here. What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. let, me, let me see here. Um, look at this one here. It's, it's kind of cool. It's a little chart if you pull it apart. Um, yeah, a, a lot of great ideas out here, but again, the lead time might take a little while for them to be to be developed. But you can look through these to get uh, gr great ideas. Now, when you set up these informational meetings, obviously you want to bond before business, like we talk about in the curriculum. Um, but I got to share a story with you. So I went to a, a Tony Robbins event uh, years ago. Tony's great. He uh, he actually invested in one of my venture capital companies. I got to meet him. Really good guy. Um, but he had a guest speaker present. And this guest speaker was the CEO of a steel, a, a steel company in Cleveland. And he wanted to get access to clients and he couldn't get any customers. So what he did was this. He got a very nice pine box and then he bought uh, an old silver dollar coin that was probably worth, it, it's a dollar coin, it's probably worth, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks. And he put the coin in the pine box and attached a handwritten letter saying something like this. John, hope all is well. Please find attached a silver dollar in this box. Now this silver dollar, although it has a face value of $1, its actual value is much higher than that. Similarly, the service I offer is much higher than the face value. And I would love to please have a meeting with you if you have time. Thanks a lot, your future boss. No, you don't, you don't write your future boss, but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But just be innovative like that. Um, and I've had people, like when I worked in venture capital, I had a lot of people reach out to me because uh, I was hard to get to. It, it is what it is in BC. Um, and so what I did uh, was if somebody sent me something incredibly unique, I would take the meeting. Like there was this startup in France uh, that sent me this poster and I opened it up. And it was like, you know, those wanted posters, the cowboy ones. It had a picture of me, a drawing with a cowboy hat. And it said, wanted a meeting with Chris. Haru. I, I had to take the meeting. I didn't invest, but I, I took the meeting. Somebody else, um, a couple of years ago, um, sent a picture saying uh, coffee meeting, question mark. And it was, uh, it was a person holding a Starbucks cop that said Chris on it. It said, do you have time? It just, it was innovative. Um, if you're creative, because everybody's a salesperson, um, and, and they appreciate the fact that you're being creative and thinking outside the box, so to speak. Yeah. And you got nothing to lose. What's the worst thing can happen? You know, they, they don't reply. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, I've got a question here uh, from Dennis. Hey, Dennis. Uh, Dennis um, uh, wrote, uh, can this program help me transition to full-time real estate investing as a beginner after working as a heavy duty uh, shop supervisor for 13 years, totally different field. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I will help you change careers. I'll help you rebrand yourself. I'll help you create the most incredible LinkedIn profile as well. If you're in the platinum program, I'll create it for you myself. Nobody else. I'll do it myself to help you change careers. And if you find that during the meetings I have with you, if in the first 30 days of the program, you're not getting at least a 10 times return on investment. I want you to ask for your money back. There's a 30 day, 100% money back guarantee, but I've helped a ton of people uh, change careers. Absolutely, yeah. Now the way to do it is you can't just apply for jobs because you know it, it, you have a one in 250 chance of getting a job if you apply. 
and the person that gets a job usually knows somebody at the company. So what we would do is I would help you architect the most incredible LinkedIn profile ever. And then I would look to see what your background is and I would help you network to meet people uh, that work in the sector you want to work in, for example, real estate, uh, to help you get informational meetings and bond. And it's kind of like dating. I know it's, it's out there, but if you set up 20 or 30 informational meetings with people that work at real estate companies like CBRE, for example, I promise you at some point you're going to get a job. And during the MBA program, I'll coach you as well on exactly what to say and what documents to bring as exhibits. In terms of real estate, I'm, asking, I'm adding a massive real estate elective layer this year, which you'll get for free as well as part of the MBA program. Yeah. Thank you. And if you have additional questions, uh, Jose or Dennis or anybody else, please keep typing them uh, over YouTube chat, uh, or you can join uh, Zoom uh, as well if you want to, per the link at the bottom here of this screen. Okay. And then Renvir wrote here, to retire is to expire. Amen. I totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. I don't want to retire, man. I'm, I'm having too much fun doing what I'm doing. And the goal is to find a, a passion, not a job. And Confucius said, find an occupation you enjoy, and you'll never work again for the day of your life, uh, for a day in your life. And my humble goal and life mission is to help you find your passion. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions here? I've got 16 minutes left. Uh, uh, Andras, uh, please, please go ahead. Andras has, um, has a hand up here uh, over, over Zoom. So please uh, unmute yourself. Uh, show yourself if you want to or just start talking. Yeah. Uh, hey, Chris, thank you for this opportunity. Can you hear me correctly? Yeah, yeah I, can, I, can, I can hear you and I, I can see you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, where are it's you? And it's Andras, correct? It, it is correct. I am from Hungary. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Pleasure to meet you. That's where George Soros is from Hungary too, right? Yeah, that yeah. is correct. Yeah, and so, I mean, and so he is... Was very yeah, he, and, he, he, and, and, and so was Andy Grove. Uh, so he was uh, one of the founders of Intel. And in the MBA program, I do a case study on this chip here that Andy Grove released, which was, it could have been a big scandal, but because it didn't work properly, but transparency builds trust. And what he did was he went on the news and told everybody there's a problem with this Intel Pentium chip in 1994. And everybody watching the news was basically saying, oh my God, this guy's so honest. And so Andy Grove basically said, he said, look, we're gonna offer 100% refund for anybody that's purchased this chip. And the genius of that marketing campaign for them, and again, we do a case study on this in the MBA program. The genius of that case study from Dr. Grove is that people were watching this interview on Report on Business, on television, CNBC, et cetera. And they were saying to themselves, oh my God, this guy is so honest and transparent. Transparency builds trust. What is that thing? That's a chip. Well, where does that go inside a computer? You can't see, feel, or touch this chip. It's inside a computer, but he got free marketing by being honest. Yeah, yeah, anyway. And he wrote a great book called Only the Paranoid Survive, which I think you, you enjoy reading. It's good, yeah, it's about business. But Andras, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. So in a few words, uh, could you please explain the different, the main differences between the platinum and the gold MBA program? Yeah, absolutely. So gold and platinum, uh, you attend the same class. And classes start on Monday, January 29th. It's going to be uh, every Monday and Tuesday until December. It's a one-year program from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific time. And so what I do is after each lesson, and I teach three lessons every day, every Monday, Tuesday, what I do is I take endless questions after each lesson using Zoom or YouTube chat, whatever works for you. Now, Platinum also includes nine one-on-one -on -one meetings with me. It's confidential coaching. So think, think of the MBA, think of Gold and Platinum as group coaching plus an MBA included or one-on-one -on -one coaching with Platinum plus an MBA included. Yeah. yeah. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Excellent, yeah, you're most welcome, cool. All right, uh, next question I've got here is, um, do you have any recommendations about laptop devices and software that are optimal for use in the MBA and your other courses? Thank you, and, and thank you also for sending an email uh, to support today that I answer you about that question. <sighs> So for me, I've, I've, I'm, I'm a nerd. I've tried every laptop there is. Um, if you're gonna, if budget is not a massive issue, I probably get a MacBook Air. Yeah, 
uh, with, with the minimum configuration, just eight gig of RAM is all you need uh, for the MBA program, 256 uh, uh, you know, gigs of, of solid state hard drive. Um, because the, the, we use Microsoft Excel and that's basically the probably the biggest application we use, which doesn't require more than eight megs of RAM. Or eight, yeah, yeah, so I, I'd recommend that. If budget is a consideration, uh, then I recommend looking into getting a Lenovo ThinkPad. Those are my favorite uh, Windows-based computers. Now, you can also get a Mac and run Windows on it as well. And there's two ways to do that. I'm happy to go into more detail if you want me to tell you about that. But those are my, my recommendations, yeah. Okay. All right, let's go next to uh, Brian, uh, and then we'll go to uh, Re Renvir. Yeah, Brian, please. All right, this will be quick. Um, sure. With the Excel things I've learned how to make from your class, mm -hmm. and I'm doing now one for a family account, mm -hmm. should I include real-time value or just leave it as whatever the value was at the beginning of the month and not worry about incorporating um, real-time yeah. value? Yeah. So what I used Does to... Does that make sense? Yeah, what I used to do when I ran my hedge fund um, is I would provide it to, um, to certain customers, like big customers, uh, in PDF format, uh, with a lock value as a month end. And what I would also do is I'd write, you probably already do this. I write a monthly letter to all investors, uh, letting them know my thoughts on the market, how I did the most recent month and my long-term investments. And if my strategy has changed in terms of which verticals or companies to invest in. Yeah. Hopefully that, that answers that. Yeah. No, that is, that's what I was thinking though. The yeah. locked end of the month, the last day of the month. Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. Cause Real time, they could just go online and use the, the app yeah. to see their Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that was it. Thank you. Cool, my, my pleasure. Okay, let's go next to uh, to, to Renvir. Yeah, so last week, we were, last week or a week before, we were talking about uh, how the metaverse will come back with uh, Apple Vision Pro. Yeah. And you told me to have a look at the, material, the raw materials yeah. that go into building the, yeah. the Apple Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. And while trying to find a suitable company, mm -hmm. it turns out that Apple does most of the thing in-house. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, with their A5 chip and all that stuff too, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to just look at so it. So how do you yeah. think I can yeah. analyze? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so when it comes to doing a teardown, um, you can look at companies like uh, like what Facebook or Meta does with Oculus, for example, Yeah. yeah. Or, or the Vive. There's tons of other uh, uh, VR slash AR companies. And you're not going to make a killing on this uh, right away. Because the install base is nothing. I think there's only 15 or 20 million uh, in, uh, sales of, of Oculus so far. So, um, but I would look at what the chip companies are uh, that power those devices. And we did something like that years ago when I worked in the hedge fund industry uh, for the Wii. When the Wii came out, the nunchuck was all, all the rave, right? Um, and we looked at all the component companies. Um, yeah. We did a teardown as well to find out what, what chips are in that product, so to speak. And we were able to invest that way. Or you can just buy ticker 7974 and Nintendo sticker uh, in Japan if, if you want to. We also did this uh, with the iPod when it first came out. I'm dating myself uh, back in 0102. Uh, I think it was Synopsys was, was the company, or I can't remember the, the exact name, that made the spinning wheel on that in the Gen 1 or Gen 2, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I know what you're, you're doing because it's so hard to find a pure play in AI uh, or in the metaverse, yeah. uh, so to speak. Um, and... When you look at the components, uh, the semiconductor company or component companies uh, that feed that ecosystem, you also want to make sure that these companies are not too small cap to the extent that liquidity is an issue and you have it only trades by appointment. And, and if you yeah. invest in companies that don't trade that much, it's deadly because when you buy it, if you use a market order, you're going to push it up. And then when you sell it, you're going to pull it down. So illiquid stocks own you in a down market, not vice versa. Last thing I'll say in that is that as I mentioned earlier today, if you're doing research on a sector and you want to invest in pure plays that represent that theme, you can always go to etfdb.com. That's etfdatabase.com. And then look at ETFs and then look at the components of that ETF and then do bottoms up analysis as I teach in the MBA degree program. For example, um, if, if you find a metaverse ETF, I'm sure they exist, uh, or you find AI ETFs, look at all the components and do research on them. Look at the smaller components of it as well. Because if you look at an ETF for AI, you know, the biggest components are, are usually gonna be NVIDIA uh, and then you know AMD and then, I don't know, 
other large cap companies. And those aren't mm -hmm. pure plays because they sell, you know, yeah. GPUs and other products uh, to other verticals, not just AI. Um, but look at the smaller cap companies. And then uh, you can always go to EMS 4-2 in your curriculum. That's Economics Management and Strategy Semester 4 Class 2. Um, and then access that 100-step investment dashboard um, uh, 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 document I provide you with. And what I added also recently to the MBA, only to the MBA actually, is um, I added an AI course that will help you do analysis. It's an elective. You can access in the last lecture of your curriculum. Let me go there and show you. Okay. Um, I added uh, uh, an elective right here, chat GPT for investing in stocks. Okay. Uh, and I partnered with Luca Ennison, who's a great friend of mine. He's a, one of the top AI experts in the world. Uh, he's based in Serbia. He's great. Uh, just like Anna here on, on the call. Um, Anna's down there. Hey, Anna. Um, and um, this basically uses four main AI products to help you do investment research. And those four products are as follows. ChatGPT, of course. You've got Bing Chat, which is kind of like ChatGPT4. Um, also, uh, Google Bard, which is not available in Canada yet. Uh, and then we use Anthropic's uh, Claude.ai. And Claude.ai is probably my favorite AI product to use because it allows you to upload five or so documents as long as it's smaller than 10 megs. And then what you can do is ask Claude.ai to pull information for those documents. So what I do, and I show you in that elective course, which is free for all MBA students, what I do is I upload several Microsoft 10Ks, meaning annual reports. And I ask Claude yeah. AI to create the income statement from each year and pull it directly from those documents. It's powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should try Grok, uh, the Twitter version of GPT. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And Elon, like uh, people don't give Elon enough credit for this. He was one of the first backers of open AI. And of course there was a, a difference in opinion, which is why he left. He's worried about uh, AI uh, getting too much autonomy uh, and you know, hurting us. Um, but he's definitely yeah. has a lot of investments in that area. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, last question before, sure. before I go. Yeah. Quick one. Uh, is, is there a website that I can use to see where, where the VCs are investing? Uh, venture capital. For, yeah. Crunchbase.com. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, you can also set up Google alerts um, for your mm -hmm. favorite venture capital companies. Now, the top 10 venture capital firms in the world dominate, and they're usually the only ones that make a lot of money. And 1% and of their portfolio becomes unicorn companies, meaning companies have a market cap of a billion dollars. However, mm -hmm. Sequoia, and you can go to their website, sequoiacap.com, Sequoia uh, has 5% of their investments as unicorns. It's incredible. So set up Google alerts uh, for Sequoia for any new portfolio mm -hmm. company. And you'll get an immediate email when it happens. What I also recommend doing is going to the websites of the venture capital firms and seeing which companies they're currently invested in. They disclose that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Now, sp speaking of AI, if you really want to understand what venture capitalists are doing right now in AI, there's a great website link. And I presented to... A couple of companies about this. They worked day in Dell recently. Uh, what you can do is go to, I'm going to switch over here. Okay. So let's go to Sequoia Cap. Here it is here. Okay. So you can go here to Sequoia's website, Sequoia Cap. And yeah. they basically, they, they have this great chart down here, uh, which will tell you which companies are dominating which sectors within AI. You know, some of these are publicly traded companies, uh, but a lot of them are private. Yeah. And this can really yeah. help you understand, you know, which companies, you know, might, might take off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for yeah, you, yeah. And, and I know you have your own AI consulting business. You might look at mm -hmm. which companies, which, which uh, software development platforms to use or software development kits to use from these companies, if available, to help you deploy and create uh, uh, your GPTs, as you mentioned before, for CMOs. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. Thanks. Of course. Yeah. And they'll update this. This is version three now. Uh, they they mm -hmm. update this uh, every every now and then. But there's some wonderful apps in here. And they've already done the due diligence yeah. for you. So, for example, Glean is kind of like Google, but for your entire company using AI. It's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Okay. Great. We got, we got, of course, my pleasure. We got three minutes left. Uh, so let me go to, uh, Andras. And if anybody has questions, uh, lift your hand, please. Andras from Hungary, please go ahead. Oh, just a side note before I get to my second question. It's impressive that you have knowledge about Hungary, even if it's, uh, even though if it's a really small country, you know, yeah. many people don't know about it. Yeah. No, I... uh, and my second question is really simple. It's big, big, um, do you think your course, your MBA, could be a substitution for a normal bachelor's degree for someone who wants to pursue entrepreneurship yeah. or writing or something like that? Yeah. So my best way to answer that question is before considering getting a degree from anywhere, always ask yourself, why? What am I going to use this for? And if it's to get a job in a certain sector, then what I recommend doing is before paying the hundred grand or whatever it might cost for an undergrad, I recommend setting up 100 informational meetings, 100 informational meetings to see if you can change careers. And if you cannot change careers after those 100 informational meetings, then consider getting whatever degree it might be. And think about each one of those meetings, which are free to set up as saving you a thousand dollars because 100 times a thousand is a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And if you find that after networking like crazy, based on what I teach you in my MBA program, for example, you still can't change careers. Let me know, see if I can help you. And maybe an option might be to go to university. Yeah. And you, you. Can, you can also look at the profiles of people that are living your dream life and see if they went to university. Not everybody did. A lot of people, you know, started in the mailroom, worked extraordinarily hard. Um, there's plenty of examples. Um, you know, like Sidney Weidenberg, who is the CEO of Goldman Sachs for a couple of decades, I think, or many years. He started in the mailroom, high school education. Same thing with Simon Cowell uh, from American Idol. Yeah, that, that, that guy that criticizes in a mean way, but it's funny sometimes. Yeah. Tons of people started in the mailroom. Yeah. Yeah. But your network is your net worth and relationships are more important than product knowledge. And a core of the MBA program in the first couple of classes we talk about networking on steroids. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, question here from uh, Enerban who wrote, uh, I'm thinking of upgrading to gold, but I guess the live sessions would not be feasible uh, in India. Yeah. Yeah. It might, might not work for you. Yeah. But if you sign up um, now, and this is not a sales tactic, I have to disclose this, as I mentioned before. Prices are going up materially for all my products starting in February. If you sign up for gold now, you get access to all future gold programs for free forever. And later on this year, I'm going to be launching another class at a much higher price, uh, which will be um, every Monday and Tuesday uh, from nine until noon Pacific time, which would probably work for you. Okay, guys, I got to wrap this up. Thank you, everybody. Please go to uh, harunmba.com slash FAQ to sign up for the MBA program. Uh, at that link, harunmba.com slash FAQ, you can see down here and the Zoom link as well. You could set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting if you want to uh, with me. I think we have two positions left uh, for, for Platinum. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, and for those of you in my Gold or Platinum MBA program, I will see you on Zoom for our weekly two-hour call and one-on-ones uh, in eight minutes. Thanks, guys. Take care. Ciao. Thanks. Thank you.